Hey, what's going on, guys? Cichlid here, back at it again with another Pro Griffith Defense video, but this time it's going to be a little bit different. We've got a live debate that I want to show you uh, on Griffith Did Nothing Wrong. I uh, recently debated with a popular YouTuber, Smudboy, who has 20k subscribers, 10 times more than me. Apparently, this is a very famous YouTuber. Uh, he is well known for once being a part of the EFAP podcast, whatever that is. Uh, he was permanently banned off there for being racist or something. Uh, not quite sure what that is about, but uh, yeah, uh, he released a knockoff of the EFAP podcast known as Smugcast. And a couple of weeks ago, they decided to do a response video or a reaction to my initial video defending Griffith why he did nothing wrong and uh, a lot of the takes they made in that video I didn't agree with I was kind of mad as I watched it couldn't really get through it very well uh, I had to watch it on two times speed but um so I offered hey would you like me to come on so I can debate you and clear things up and they said yeah sure let's do it so uh that's what that's what uh, we did it was a a few hours ago now, I uh, had to have a lot of caffeine to stay awake, um, and uh, it's a ride, it is a ride, gets pretty crazy in some places, uh, Smudboy uh, even goes on to say things like, um, it's impossible to feel empathy for strangers, so uh, there's something to uh, look forward to later on in the video, um, there is an alternate version of uh, this uh, debate on Smudboy's channel, uh, where he, he he screen recorded the Discord call, and uh, my voice sounds pretty bad on that Discord call. call. I keep cutting, uh, my voice keeps cutting out, and you can you can't really hear what I'm saying. But uh, on my recording, it sounds a lot better because I recorded it through OBS. Um, so yeah, if you want the full debate experience, watch it here. Uh, but I did win the debate, by the way. Just know, I absolutely trounced these motherfuckers. Uh, they came quite unprepared. But, uh, so grab some popcorn and, um, just, like, enjoy yourselves. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Smudcast number 686. We are defending Griffith again and why he did nothing wrong. This time we're having the author of the video on. It's always nice to have people on and talk to us about their video as opposed to us trying to figure it out. So thank you very much for Cichlet. Is it Sitch or Cichlet? How do I pronounce your name? Cichlet. Okay, yeah. it sounds like a candy of some kind. Uh -huh. That's okay. Uh, all right, so we covered this, uh, was at least a month ago, with a bunch of people who were, I guess, fans. I mean, Mark, you're a fan of Berserk. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah I, I've read and watched some of it, but I, it's so big, it's so long, and you'd have to stay up to date with all the references in the lore to make sure you're like there's all the characters you can't remember so i'm a semi anime manga fan of berserk but because my fantasy uh, manga is, is limited to the past <laughs> 12 years i'm probably not very well versed in 90s and 80s of a fantasy except for maybe lodos war so yeah, this it's nice to well, have has, that was a while ago well, yeah, we're talking 80s and 90s, right? So that's pretty much when Berserk was uh, popping up. And we got the anime in the 90s, so uh, that's when it became more popular. And people began to pay attention. Wow, this is a great story, and this is great characters. This is fun to watch and fun to read. And then there's this gigantic manga to, to check out. So that's what people are impressed by. I think everyone misses Mira and his work and the people who are keeping it going. Which his dialogue is dearly missed. Like it's just not the same anymore. It's just like a early draft now with uh, almost final draft uh, art. I would say. What's the release date on or the release schedule on these mangas now that he's gone? Is it once a month? Is it every well, two months? Well, every odd month maybe. Okay. Right now we are waiting for like an end of July release. So it's like those those gemstones you're just anticipating every few. Months. <laughs> oh, when's it going to come out? Yeah, well, we all have those wonderful gems. So this, I believe, is uh, Sichlet's gem. This is your, one of your favorite, if not your favorite, anime manga, I believe. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm mostly a fan of the Golden Age arc. Uh, anything beyond that, my memory gets a little fuzzy. 
But uh, yeah, I'm a massive fan of that arc, that's, Griffith in particular. That's that's the same for me. Yeah, it gets so big, and there's so many characters and side characters and arcs that I just go, "Whoa, this is too much." And I like it. The art is beautiful, but it's hard to follow sometimes. But uh, yeah. yeah, okay. The Golden Age All feels right. more uh, intimate. I feel with the characters and stuff. I did notice a lot of flashbacks even throughout the story when you go into like the hundreds and two hundreds of the episodes, which is a fascinating technique for telling a story because it's like, oh, we should have known about this, you know, back in you know the twenties and the thirties. Mm -hmm. But uh, he tells he tells the story that way, so it's kind of like, oh, this is kind of like cheating, I guess. <laughs> you just tell the story, yeah, this big important event that happened between these two characters uh, years and years ago. Like in the latest chapter, I believe, like there's a flashback or like a callback to like the, the literally the first chapter of Berserk when uh like it, I think it's the first chapter of Golden Age arc when uh Guts is just lonely sitting on top of the wall with his sword on his uh, lap. Yeah. yeah, it's just like there's like three flashbacks of that moment alone. Cool. I mean, it's it's his, definitely a technique that I've seen a lot in Berserk. So that's whether that was planned or he he wants to provide context. It works for some people. That's great. Anyway, uh, we can ramble on about how much we like the show and how much we like the manga. But let's get into the video. And uh, I've watched a few other videos with I think a similar title, and I, I realized this was an actual meme, like five years ago, and I wasn't aware because I didn't really pay attention to anime or manga memes so i'm guessing is that the the point of the 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 title because it's kind of like saying the villain of a story is villainous it's like well yeah obviously he's a mercenary leader he kills people he gets people to kill for him i mean it's kind of a given that he's morally in that category you can't uh, say that killing is good right uh yeah um that video title was a meme title um, I didn't actually argue in the video that Griffith literally did nothing wrong. Uh, right. I, I, I assume that. Yeah. yeah, I even went over uh, the... You, you guys even went over the part of the start where I said that Griffith isn't perfect and that all I'm doing is drawing a moral equivalence between Guts and Griffith to say that people's hatred of human Griffith is overblown. Not that he literally did nothing wrong. So, uh, right. but you kind of kept... kept uh, talking about how I was arguing that Griffith did nothing wrong, um, well, which I never yeah, actually we, did. I never stated that in my video, but I the understand why, the confusion. Yeah, yeah. the reason why we do that is a lot of people base their video on a title. And it's kind of like, okay, well, then the video should be about the title. And it ends up not being. And we're just sitting there going, what's the point? But in this case, it's a meme. This is, a, this is an ongoing joke as the years went by. I wasn't aware of that because I wasn't a, a Berserk fan at the time. And it's like, oh, okay, so this is just a thing that people want to get to know. They find your video, they go, okay, cool. So that that I had to get out of the way because it's like, okay, obviously he's not perfect. Obviously, he's he's in a very dark fantasy world where a lot of people are doing a lot of bad things. So I think that's that's fair enough. Okay. Yeah, and um, um, meme titles like that that I use, I also sort of use it to gauge... Um, how much of the video uh, the people in my comment sections have actually watched. Um, I have another video called Why Griffith is Legally Innocent, which is another meme title. I don't literally argue that he's legally innocent. That's silly. I simply use um, uh, legal examples of sort of concepts like informed consent, voluntary intoxication, stuff like that, um, as examples of my moral beliefs and practice. And so... When people comment on those videos and say, oh, well, he can have legally done nothing wrong. That doesn't make sense. He killed a load of people. I can sort of uh, get an idea for how much uh, of my video people actually watch. But yeah. Right. And that's that's kind of a, a very gray area when you're talking about legal areas of, well, to say the states. They have a legal jurisdiction of all different kinds of tariffs and and God knows what else that is considered good or bad or sentencing is good or bad or high or low, that would be a mess. Yeah, I don't think yeah, anyone exactly. can make a... Like, the Arizonian legal system says this, and well, the Floridian legal system says that. It's like, that's not going to go anywhere fast, so... Yes. Anyway. I, I was just about to ask, like, which uh, state this is based on, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. 
Okay. Anyway, so we're going to start at, uh, let's say, the 52nd mark for our first question, just to see where we're going. Okay. Uh, that's a good That's a good start. Let me just... Fa- this is a very finicky player, so let me just make sure that uh, Watch Together is doing the job. Okay, I'm at 50. There we go. So we're going to hit the play button for a few seconds and see what happens. The appropriate amount of sympathy for what he went through. This caught my eye most recently. Okay, totally screwed up. I apologize. <laughs> Let's go back a bit. There we go. Notice two patterns when it comes to Griffith discourse. One, that no one understands the guy, like at all. And two, that no one's giving him the appropriate amount of sympathy for what he went through. This caught my eye most recently when I made a post on Reddit defending Griffith for his selfless actions throughout the Golden Age arc. Okay, so there's a, there's a good point. Uh, no one's giving Griffith the appropriate amount of sympathy for what he went through. Okay, so what exactly should we be sympathizing with Griffith? Um, well, first of all, we'll start from his childhood. Uh, you should be sympathetic to his uh, situation and how he was materially necessitated to rise in status. Um, I in in the pre in the response video uh, you made, I noticed that you said that unlike guts, Griffith had quite a uh, a comfortable childhood. You said that there's no evidence that he was poor, but this is actually really not true. Um, in the fountain scene with Charlotte during his dream speech, at the end of that speech, he says that um, there were times when he was a boy when he wasn't even able to afford a slice of bread. So that, even that, shows that um, he should be sympathized with for wanting to get out of that situation. Unlike a lot of the Hawks, he was materially necessitated to go out and kill because he was literally starving. Um, So there's that, first of all. Second of all, once he actually entered the battlefield at 12, 13 years old, he realized that it was a really horrible place and a lot of men were dying for him and that traumatizes him. So uh, we should feel sympathy for him uh, for that. Um, And his emotional repression in general, while it was a mistake, uh, you can of course sympathize with it, uh, just like we sympathize with Guts when he uh, represses his emotions, which happens a lot, uh, be it through his sexual trauma from Donovan or uh, later on in the Black Swordsman arc, Uh, Guts does a lot of it as well. Um, And then third of all, um, we should should sympathize with him for how he was manipulated in the Eclipse. Um, In my previous video, I kind of skimmed over the Eclipse because I assumed that uh, no one really cared. Um, They only really care about what uh, he did to Casca because I get a lot of comments saying that they understand what Griffith did and they would do the same in his situation and all that. Um... But yeah, um, since that video, I've come up with a lot uh, stronger arguments as to why Griffith is innocent in terms of the sacrifice of the Eclipse. He was manipulated by the God okay. Hand in a really... Uh, so, and we should feel sympathy for him for that, uh, for the mental there, state he was in at the time. Okay, well, we could. the reason why we feel sympathy towards characters is that we are concerned about them. Now, if you were to say why don't we empathize with Griffith? Like that would be a very rational thing to do because we do that in general when we hear a story. I think the difference is because people dislike Griffith for his actions. They don't want to feel remorse or care about his upbringing because the results speak for themselves. Okay. So he may have come from a horrible background. He may have had people die for him, but the end result sort of washes that away and says, oh, okay, this is not a person worth sympathizing for. Yeah, well, I think people are misinformed about his actions and uh, his level of accountability for said actions. Uh, Well, we can get into that. Before we get into that, sorry to interrupt, but like uh, you said that we were arguing that like uh, he wasn't poor. Did did we actually say that? Uh, Yes, I don't know which which one it was, but uh, yeah, you you did say that. Okay, well, yeah, that that is fair. But like in no way... (laughs) A shape or form, like uh, Griffith had to go through like to a war zone from like uh, the very age, day that he was born. Like it's just incomparable. Like How of old? course, like all, all people in Berserk are having a shitty life unless they are like part of the royalty that we can even see. I think 
the Lost Children arc is like a perfect uh, example for that. Like you, you can just like see it from the perspective of like a little poor girl that like gets abused at home and like just runs away from home because like that's just literally hell for her to live. So it's just like the normal peasants, like what kind of life they have when they don't have to participate in war. It's like that. that yeah. That's all I wanted to say. I mean, how old is Guts when he joins the battlefield? I think he's about, he's around six. Six. Um, I'm guessing Six, yes. Griffith like was he's around... He's carrying the sword. Yeah, I'm guessing Griffith was around 12 or 13. Of course, Guts got raped as a nine-year-old. Griffith sort of was sexually abused by Ganon at around 13 or 14. And I know... Uh, he, he, he was willing to do that. It was yeah, his you own do talk choice about choice, raped. but he was, he was 14. Um, so he didn't it, consent. Yes, but like it, it, was, it was his uh, choice to get sold for sex, yeah. Yes, but, but he, he was He was minor. doing it for money. Yeah, he was a minor, though. Absolutely, that it is disgusting. I absolutely agree with that. But like the fact that he did that to save more people from his army, just, just as you said, yeah, yeah, that that is exactly what happened. But like it is disgusting. But um, it was yeah, his I, choice to get raped, and not guts was helpless. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that, but um, and I'm not suggesting that um, what Griffith went through there was as bad. Uh, or worse than what Guts went through. Obviously, what Guts went through was worse, but um, uh, it was still bad, and it can still be sympathized with. Um, uh, also, this whole thing with the sort of... Because he chose to do it, um, therefore it's okay. Um, no, it's not okay. It, it's, no, not okay. Okay, it's... yeah, I, I worded it wrong, but... Um, in terms of the sacrifice at the eclipse, I got the impression that um, because just because he chose to sacrifice his men, therefore he is accountable. That the choice in itself indicates consent, and we don't have to think about how informed uh, that decision was, or um, the power dynamic between the accepting party and the offering party. None of that matters because he said yes to the sacrifice, and. Uh, Recently, um, I've, I've begun arguing um, that um, informed consent does matter in terms of um, Griffith's agreement to the contract, and because he was manipulated, uh, he's therefore unaccountable for the consequences of the contract. And the Do God you mean the manipulation that. for the God Hand during the clips? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Sorry, I went off the, off the rail a bit there, sorry. No, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, that, that was a very straightforward uh, question about why should we sympathize for a character. This is based off the concept of drama, and we either like a character or we don't for whatever reason the individual viewer cares about. So sympathy is a very specific emotion, whereas empathy is understanding what a character is going through. If you can't comprehend that in the narrative, if the narrative is not clear enough, you're not paying attention. So I at least hope that people could empathize with the character's and then say, I like this character because, or I dislike this character because. Yeah, I mean, so, I think I, that if if you can sympathize with Guts, you must also sympathize with Griffith, because they did basically well, no, no, go no, 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 that's what I just thing. said. Yeah. You either, like, that's my you, either like the you either like the character, and you can sympathize, but I like Guts, but I don't care to sympathize for him. I don't need to. It's not my prerogative to sympathize for fictional characters. It doesn't bother me. But I can empathize with Griffith easily because the story is very clear what happened to him. I don't need to feel pity for him, for example. I don't need to go through that uh, sense of shame or retribution, whatever he had to go through. You see, like, I don't need to do that in, in a dramatic play or an operetta or a movie. It does, it, it does, it's not my prerogative to cry or laugh, right? It's just I don't have that emotion in me, right? So I think the, the word sympathy is a bit too strong. And I think you want to keep going back to empathy because that means that I can understand the narrative like you do and say, oh, you're right. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware. I, I forgot about this in the story. That would make me care more about him in that regard. That's, that's fine, I think. I mean, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, uh, let's go on to, uh, where are we? One minute and 45 seconds. Let's just see what that is. Uh, I might have to rewind a bit. I might have written these poorly down. Okay, here we go. Laying out the case, not to say that Griffith is perfect, but that he is about as moral as Guts, and shouldn't be hated any more than him. And okay, that's interesting. So why is 
Griffith is moral as guts, and why should we like him or dislike him just as much as guts? Uh, because Guts and Griffith made the same mistakes in terms of emotional repression, and the only difference in the outcome of their characters was pure luck. Um, I'll go into this and explain it. Um, Griffith repressed his uh, emotionality and denied how he truly felt towards Guts and the Hawks, and that led him to freak out when Guts left, and he slept with Charlotte, and he fucked his whole life up uh, based on one night of, uh, of uh, being in a really uh, emotional state of mind. Um, Guts did the exact same thing after the eclipse. Uh, he tried to uh, repress his emotions. There's a very, there's a very cool um, speech in chapter 2, I believe, where Guts basically echoes Griffith in his dream speech where he talks about... Um, to get what he wants, he, he squashes he squashes the bugs at his feet and he, he doesn't care about other people. He doesn't really feel emotions. He just likes killing. But it's obvious that that's a lie because, of course, it Guts is cares. a lie indeed. Yeah. yeah, and that's a parallel to Griffith. Um, Guts uh, represses his trauma in the exact same way and he abandons Casca for two and a half, was it two and a half years, you... I believe? Uh, he abandons her in the elf cave because he can't oh, deal with it. it. Hello? Uh, sorry, like it cut your voice. Can we change the region? Maybe it can stabilize the connection. Okay, I... one second. Oh. Uh, I'll try... How's Hong Kong? Let's try Hong Kong. Hong Kong, yeah. Hello from Hong Kong. Is everyone? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Hello. Where was okay. I at before I was cut off? Uh, not not uh, 10 seconds after like the reference to uh, chapter 2. In the manga about guts uh, faking his emotions oh yeah so that's a parallel to griffith and uh so griffith uh, guts represses his trauma after the eclipse and essentially uh uh deals with that by abandoning casca in the elf cave and going off for two and a half years to uh go and slay monsters at any point there casca could have uh died she could have been hurt and so could guts and uh, we would sympathize with him uh, if that did happen. So the only difference is uh, luck. Uh, Guts could have very well have uh, suffered the consequences of his uh, emotional repression, um, but he didn't. And he had two and a half years of freedom to contemplate his his problems and his issues and what was going wrong with him. And he had the he had that long to figure out that what he was doing was wrong, and then he was able to go back to Casca. That makes okay. him privileged. So, and with, okay, with Griffith... Wait Just wait. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so you're saying morality is based on emotional repression? What? No. I'm saying... Well, I'm saying that it's a bad thing to do that. And, uh, okay, yeah, but we're talking means... about morality. No, so we're we talking about like... sympathy? What are we talking about? Oh, why... Oh, why... Right, right. Yes, yes, um... What, well, what do you think that Griffith did that was uh, immoral that Guts hasn't done? Well, I, before that, I would like to re respond to like the Guts uh, criticism, which because like, well, yes, he was away two years, but like he gets called out for that by Godot, the blacksmith, that like uh, he didn't care about the things that like he had around him, and, like he just pursued this uh, waged war, like this uh, act of vengeance, because like. Well, I don't really understand like what you were going for about like what exactly like he could have done in that cave. He was just like chilling there with Casca and like maybe like try to get her potato brain back to normal, which is impossible. Like they needed to like uh, get some help for that. So uh, they were actively targeted because of the brand. So they he had to go and hunt those apostles to figure out like what is happening. Like he was going for that mission yeah, to yeah. figure out a way to like get back at the God Hand. Yeah, but, but my my, like, my point yeah. is that Guts had that privilege. He had that amount of time 
Griffith made one mistake in his entire life in freaking out with the princess, and his life was fucked up irreversibly. He had no way to learn from his mistakes like that. Guts had the privilege of time. They made the same mistake. That, that is not a privilege of being actively haunted by demons, and like every single time, like yes, I understand. Yeah. Sleep deprived and such things. Yeah, like, I understand that, that, is that not but I'm talking about privilege <laughs> in terms of. Uh, having the time to ponder your mistakes, not not in general. Wait a second. Wait a second. So Griffith didn't have one year to hang, be hung up from a rope and think about his... Yeah, okay, his but his life was already fucked up by that point. He had, he had, no, he had, no, he had no... He had no opportunity to learn from his mistakes and then improve wait, wait, because wait, wait, he was... Wait, wait. Oh, and by the he, way, he, cannot... he did, he did um, recognize his... Uh, his uh, problem and where he'd been going wrong in the dungeon, in the inner monologues in the dungeon, he expressed his regret about how he repressed his emotions towards guts. The problem is, it's too late, and there's nothing he can do about that now. He does acknowledge which, his, his which mistake. chapter is that? Chapter forty-nine. He uh, he express when he's listing all of his emotions. He express he um he, one of the emotions that he says he's feeling is regret towards guts, and the whole the whole um. The whole inner monologue is about him finally acknowledging that Guts is the only person who made him forget his dream. He's like, why is this one person um, making me feel so emotional? He's actually acknowledged it now that he's made that mistake. He's, he's embraced his emotionality, but it's too late. Does that make sense? I'm reading the chapter while you can carry on, Smart Okay, no, I'm just I'm just <laughs> trying to understand that you're equating morality should be equal, or, or saying that it should be equal because of time to do something. Well, I'm not referring based... to I'm not referring to morality. Um, I think it, in my video, can we can we go back a bit? Did I say that I said that he sure, shouldn't sure. be hated any more than him? And people hate characters not just because of morality; they may hate their personalities. You said he, you said Griffith was a narcissist and stuff. So you may hate Griffith for uh, his mistakes in repressing his emotions. You might think that's sad and pathetic, but you might not hate Guts for the same reasons because he he pushed beyond that. But what I'm saying is that Guts had the opportunity to push beyond that and learn from it and create a better life for himself. Griffith didn't have that opportunity. It was totally down to luck. And I actually think this is a flaw in the storytelling and Miura's presentation of his themes. Uh, but yeah. Okay, let's, let's put play here. Haven't already. I also want to make clear that I'm laying out the case, not to say that Griffith is perfect, but that he is about as moral as guts and shouldn't be hated any more than him. I'm going to be laying out... Okay, so... You say he's about as moral and shouldn't be hated as much or as more than him. That's, that's those are two different things, right? Uh -huh. Okay. I I could hate Griffith for raping Casca and killing his team, right? I could. That's totally normal, right? Yep. That's a simple thing to hate for. Fair. Okay. I could also hate someone more because of that than another person wandering around for two years, right? Okay, but that's not that. what we were comparing. Um, I have. What are we comparing? Well, we were just comparing emotional repression between Guts and Griffith, but if you but if you want to okay, get so, if you want to get into the rape and the sacrifice, that's what my video is about. That's what I'm defending. Okay. I'm telling you why you okay, shouldn't so, hate him for that. Okay, so we're talking about time then and emotional repression to express that time and, and the year is too long or two years is too long or whatever the case is, right? I'm saying that the um, parallel between Guts and Griffith in terms of emotional repression, you can't use that parallel to draw a moral conclusion or a conclusion um, so, uh, like a, a, uh, a moral of the story that uh, Griffith is worse because he repressed his emotions, Guts is better because he overcame that. You shouldn't make that. You can't make that conclusion because the context Why? of their situations is a uh, fundamentally because the context of their situations is different. Griffith didn't have the but, opportunity to improve. But the, but the okay, but you said the problem is emotional repression, right? Yeah, They're both doing yeah, they, the same thing. Exactly. So Griffith shouldn't okay. be hated any more than guts. There, I make. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Great. Yep. We we've established the problem is emotional repression, right? Okay. okay. 
Why are they repressing their emotions? One of them is because Guts has been traumatized. He ran away. He's fighting demons. He's being chased by demons. He's doing whatever. He's trying to get by. He's, he's, I think he goes back to do the things he's good at, which is swinging a sword. That's his, his regular yes, death, right? that's that's all he's good at. So he goes back to the thing that makes him happy or effective or functional or whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the reason. But that's equally as bad as when Griffith represses his emotions when? Like, what am I comparing here? When he represses his emotions uh, on, uh, on the snowy hill when Guts tries to leave. Um, if you remember in my last video, when Griffith says, you belong to me, when he snaps back into that persona that he hadn't really uh, adopted for three years by that point, when he snaps back into that, that's him, that's him repressing his true emotions towards Guts. He's snapping back into that persona okay. as a defense mechanism. So, okay, so he's distraught, depressed, whatever. He's feeling something, or if he's depressed, he's feeling nothing. And then he goes to Charlotte to make himself feel better or to gain something out of his loss. He wants to feel better. I always second. saw that uh, <laughs> inappropriate moment as like a way that like he wants uh, power again. Okay, he so wants to is, feel powerful yeah. again. Is your argument, yeah, he's lost something. Is your argument that um, Guts is more justified in uh, repressing his emotions because he went through something worse? Is that is that what you're saying? I'm, I'm saying the is, comparison of of emotion of repressing it is indicative of the emotion itself and the situation that led to it so i could have an emotion about cutting my hands and feel good but that would be a dumb thing because i'm hurting myself but for whatever reason my brain is wired or i don't know i i've been classically conditioning myself to to like pain or something like that like that would be morally wrong someone should step in and stop me or else i'll be cutting myself and eventually hurting myself right so you can't equate emotional repression the act itself the same way someone else is repressing emotion because they have their own conditions their own environment their own situations as to why they're doing that. okay but they they are repressing the same kinds of emotions they're denying their emotionality they're, they're not the same not the same like every single time guts does something that is over the line he feels regret over it like just think about like the black swordsman arc like the end of it when uh he was telling the little girl to just kill herself after he killed off the right. slot count. And, and then, like, he turns around and, like, he does all of that so, like, he can give a reason for that poor girl to, like, live on just so she can hate him. Yeah. And then he starts crying. Like, he, he, he hates this life. He hates every single life. And even when... I, I didn't want to like go this had when uh, the rape happened between not not the rape but like that uh, moment happened between guts and uh, Casca when uh, they were on the road alone and he got uh, taken over by the beast of darkness uh, he uh, fuck what I was died to say that's my train of Talia <laughs> <laughs> okay okay well, that... well what, I, what I was trying to say is Oh, go ahead, go ahead. That regret also but like, applies like, to yeah, Griffith. Okay, I got Griffith it back. also uh, regrets so, a lot of the things that he does. And he feels bad about oh, it. Worse where, than where Guts, does in he, fact. Where does he display that? Like the lake scene. That, that is the, one, but like that scene. is very early on on his journey to form an army. Nope, that's not true. Um, there's the lake scene. Is it? Uh, there's the scene after he kidnaps uh, Foss's daughter. Uh, then there's the entire uh, Eclipse uh, vision sequence. That is worrying about his public image. No, it wasn't. He was because, like, he asked Guts, who is like his, well, he is the closest friend he has. Like, he, Guts is the only one who knows about the assassination. No one in the Hawks would just accept and like just uh, go with that kind of thing. No, but we already know from the context of the lake scene that he genuinely does feel like he's cruel. He's not only uh, caring about his his uh, self image, um, his image from Guts's perspective. He genuinely that, that is a very that. normal thing for like any kind of person who is leading an army that like he feels like that. So like, so so oh, he man, does I'm feel regret man. just like guts. He feels bad. Very early. Not like no because guts. it's G guts is very different. No because him saying do you think I'm cruel guts that shows a continuity from when guts from when Griffith was like fourteen in the lake scene all the way up to the golden age arc, uh, all the way up to the to the. Um, to the Queen mini arc, and later on, 
um, the guard hand show Griffith images of uh, visions of the uh, dead child soldier. So clearly he's still affected by it and still feels bad about it because the guard hand literally used that um, to play on Griffith's empathetic guilt in the in the eclipse. So he never uh, loses yeah, that yeah. empathy in the in the time skip whatsoever. In fact, he well, becomes that, that was uh, the god hand pushing him over, yes, because that was probably his last bit of empathy. Just because, like, he didn't understand, like, well, if, if I allow this, like, can I still look good in front of these people? He, he he's like a narcissistic sociopath. So, he, like, every single time he asks like these things, but the how could fountain saint he... with Charlotte too. If he was a sociopath, why why would the god hand bother playing on his empathetic guilt? If he was a sociopath, he wouldn't feel guilt. He wouldn't feel enough guilt to be clawing at his own arms while while going on an erratic rant about all the men that died for him in the lake season and how he must atone for their deaths. It's, it's an easy it's an easy way to like push someone towards like uh, addiction. I, I thought like that's a kind of like thing like oh I did a bad thing. Like, but there, there's no way to stop now. Why, why stop now? Just oh, okay, go ahead but, but, and like go, achieve that goal. Okay, but those scenes still prove that he's not sociopathic. Wait a second. Okay, we're talking about people in a fantasy world who kill people. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. So if you are in a world where you're killing people, you're a sociopath. All right, you 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 were like, doing like what, 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 no, look at his no. face when the uh, the fountain at the fountain and Charlotte gets informed that like oh no uh, the little boy Adonis gets killed. Like, look at those eyes. I'm glad you brought that up because the, there is a reason that uh, the dream the dream speech scene comes directly before the next arc in which we explore Griffith's um, Griffith's backstory with Casca at the lake scene when we discover that he has a very traumatic history with dead children and he attempts to repress his emotions towards dead children. That, that, that is not repressing. No no one is looking at like Charlotte right, just looked away and like that that was the real Griffith. No, Every was... time he, he gets it, what he wants, he has that uh, okay, smug let me ass ask, expression. Let me ask you a question. How do you know Go that ahead. he was smiling specifically at the child dying rather than him ignoring the child dying and simply smiling at the fact that Julius had died? How do you know he was basking in the fact that the child had died? How do you know that he was enjoying that rather than him just ignoring it and compartmentalizing it like we have evidence of him doing in the narrative? Because he can't be lying all the time. Like, there's no way that he can hide all of his emotions. Well, he does. He can't like, in the even, end. And even as, like, he expresses that. Like, and, like, people would look at that. Well, yeah, the like, whole point how, of his story was image that... would you have with Guy Griffith? He was ultimately unable to successfully repress his emotions. And that how, is how he, he ended up in the dungeon scene. He didn't, he didn't admit to himself the emotions he was feeling. Well, because he's a narcissist. <laughs> no, not he because not he's a narcissist, the because, he's, because he's been traumatized by the deaths of so many soldiers. If he, if so he, he went on to have that, sexual advances on Charlotte. Wait a second, wait a minor second. Yes. Time. How, many, how, many deaths, how many deaths of soldiers are we talking here? Tens of thousands. Thousands? 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 Okay. Tens of thousands. I don't, I don't know if you know this, but the more you do something, the less emotionally involved you become, right? Okay, like but yeah, that, that, that's kind of like why I brought up that like the, at the lake scene was probably early in his career. Okay, you can but, say like, that. Didn't, didn't he? Didn't, didn't he had the dialogue that he already had like tens of thousands of yeah. soldiers dying? Yeah, every well, every okay. ten battles he loses hundreds of soldiers, right? Well, you can say that in real life in psychology, um, the more you do what? something, the less you care. But we have evidence from the narrative the end of the Golden Age arc in the eclipse of Griffith being absolutely. Um, like com completely um, horrified at all the people that have died for him. So clearly, he hasn't wait, wait, been desensitized to it. The chapter chapter seventy seven when he's confronted with the pile of corpses, when he's apologizing profusely to them over and over and over again. Okay, that's well after the fact that we're talking about the. But Griffith but you thing. said that over time he became numbed to um, 
to the soldiers that he killed, when obviously that isn't the case, because right up to the end of the Golden Age arc, remember we're talking about human Griffith, right up to that point, yeah. he was feeling just as much agonizing, empathetic guilt towards his soldiers as he had okay, ever Okay, so this done. is a flashback, right? This is a flashback that it's Nero not, just pulls up out of nowhere, right? It's not a flash. No, 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 this, no. Is, this is the eclipse, like when... Well, he gets manipulated into uh, by the members of Gotham by showing him uh, images of the corpses, and like then That's they show illusion. the castle, and that you right. need to build your way through the corpses. Yes, it's, right, it's, exactly. it's, it's, it's a big illusion. Yes, it's an illusion, but they're playing on his empathetic guilt to convince him to sacrifice them. Yes. Basically, what but they like say what, what is the last thing that he says before accepting the deal? That Guts was the only person. The that only made him person forget that made him his forget room. his. Yes. Well, what's yeah. your point? My point is that, like, ultimately, he's asked, like, okay, well, do you want this dream? No? Okay. Like, then, then like, fuck him. Like, let's kill all of them. I don't understand. He, 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 we, we're going to go back to, like, that, like, ultimately, he made the choice that he wants to sacrifice them, no matter, like, uh, what they are. Yes, like, but... What did they mean for him? Yes, but Griffith acted on the Hawks' consent. Hawks' ex How? Yeah. Like, yeah, no, none of them... None of them were happy to be annihilated by demons. Never said. Like, okay, okay, I, I, j just a moment. Like, I understand that, like, the Hawks have signed up that, like, okay, we're gonna die for you, Gif Griffith. We're gonna go war with uh, to this war zone to fight the war that you want to do. But in, in no shape form they, they sign up to be fighting with demons. We're just gonna just tore them into shreds. That's absolutely 100% true. You're right on that. The Hawks yeah, did not like actually... Yeah, all of them are horrified. The Hawks did not actually consent to be sacrificed, but Griffith acted on what he perceived to be their consent as manufactured by the God Hand. The God Hand lied to him that the Hawks will forgive him for being sacrificed and will celebrate in his successes in the afterlife, for they have always loved him. That is what the God Hand tell Griffith. That but, um, even if they are now okay. crushed by despair, once they realize what Griffith has done, they will forgive him and they will welcome him warmly. So they're, 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 uh, the God Hand are uh, bringing up the, the consent of the Hawks because they know that Griffith values the consent of the Hawks in his mind. This, this falls completely in line with his characterization. In the lake scene, uh, his, justifica his justification for allowing so many men to die is that um, they chose to fight those battles, just as he chose to fight his. That's always been the reason why he, um, why he feels like it's okay for these people to die, and the God Hand play into this. Griffith is in a uh, mentally compromised state, and the God Hand use the fact that they demonstrably, dem demonstrably uh, they demonstrated that they could read minds, and they used this to lie to Griffith that the Hawks would consent to be sacrificed. What they were actually cryptically referring to was the fact that um, when they went into the Vortex of Souls, um, they would lose their individuality, and as part of the collective subconscious, they would um, help Griffith and uh, cheer him on. Uh, as part of the collective subconscious, which controls the idea of evil, which twists fate. But they didn't tell Griffith that. They were very cryptic okay. about it. Oh, okay. So, like, what? you agree that, like, the God Hand is evil? Yes. Okay. okay, then how do you explain the idea of evil? Like, the God of this universe, so-called? You want me to, ex to explain the idea of evil? No, no, like, as in, like, what is your opinion? Because, like, it's, like, very clear in that chapter that, like, all the events that formed around Griffith, like, even his creation was just manipulated by fate, like, causality. Well, that also... Like, that's he also... was meant to be doing these actions. Like, he, he has been... Well, we could even say that, essentially, like, all of this was, like, fated to be happening the way it is. Well, And, like, uh... Griffith is enjoying it. I don't, well, uh, Griffith is enjoying it after he already had his uh, personality changed by the transformation, but we'll get to that in a bit. Um, uh, hold on, I just completely lost my trail of thought. Um, uh, what, what were you saying? What was I answering? Uh, we were talking about the idea of evil, I believe. 
Uh, yeah, um, I don't really care about the fate and causality argument. Um, it is, if anything, it is a defense of Griffith that, um, and the God Hand appealed to fate when they were manipulating him. They said he, they literally, and I quote, "There is no other choice." They appeal to fate and God's will. They tell him that this will happen. They strip him of any real choice, and Griffith has. Um, Griffith has no way to know otherwise. He's in a hallucinogenic state, and he's immortal. Wait, wait, These wait. ideas are beyond his comprehension. First off, there's a, 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 a what is it? A ritual every two hundred sixteen years, yeah. where you have to make the choice to become whatever they, whatever you're part of the God Hand or this apostle yeah. or, that, or that apostle. Yeah. So he he had to make the choice. Now you were saying he was manipulated. Yeah, he was manipulated. That happened after he already gave the speech, of what he says. Yes, what is the point of regretting anything and all that little talk when he's carrying the dead body up in the illusion? So that's well after or well before anything else is, is said like, oh, you, you should go, uh, all these people will die for you, they'll, they'll be happy about that. That's uh, Slanis saying that word, where this is before Ubik is revealing himself. Well, that's, so he's already made up his mind. No, that speech is in reference to what good would be giving up now. How would that help the dead? What good would that do for the dead for him to give up now? Yeah, that would is, mean that their I, dreams I, are wasted. He's He wants to appease the souls of the dead, which is another selfless motivation. No, no, he's not. He's saying this. Yes, what is the point of regretting anything? What is the use of repenting my sins? Exactly. exactly. What can I possibly say to those who have died? I cannot apologize to them now. This is the path that I have chosen. If I regret my actions or seek atonement, then it is all over, and I will never reach my destined goal. He's just saying, this is what I want, which is the castle and the, you know, the, the kingdom. Yes, That's but it. if we look at the context of the whole scene and what the God Hand are saying, they're talking about regret and atonement in terms of giving up and, no, and not piling up the corpses, stopping doing that. He says there's no point. They, they tell him, you can't stop doing that. How do you think the dead child soldier would, would feel if you stopped and apologized? How do you think he would feel? And then they show him the dead child soldier saying, I want to be a knight. And then, and then he start, and Griffith starts screaming. <laughs> They're absolutely appealing to uh, what the dead want Griffith is motivated by a sunk cost fallacy predicated on the inherent value of his men's lives, dreams, and labor. Let me quote the, uh, the, the lake scene because this is really important. Griffith says, um, hold on, I've got to get it up. He says something along the lines of, um, hold on, I'll get it up one second. Um, I have it written chapter, down. What is, what is this scene? Chapter 17. I've got it up. Hold on. Um, let me just quote it directly. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, but if for their sakes, for this, okay, let, let me go a bit. I don't feel responsible for my comrades who've lost their lives under my command because they themselves chose to fight. He's referring to consent. But if for their sakes, for the sake of the dead, if there's something I can do, that thing is to win. I'll keep winning to fulfill my dream to which they clung, putting their lives on the line. My dream can only be realized by building upon their corpses. It's a blood-smeared dream after all. I have neither regret or no remorse about that. But for hundreds, thousands of lives to hang in the balance and myself alone not to be unclean, my, my dream can't enter my grasp so easily as that. So he clearly is motivated by a sunk cost fallacy where he believes that um, he can't stop now because if he does, then the dead would have died for nothing. This is the dream that they clung to in life. That's the one thing he can do for the dead. That's his motivation. And the God Hand are reminding him of that. They're reminding him of, um, of what he'd repressed because this is this is a moment where his mask slips in the lake scene momentarily, and we see his true okay. his true uh, motives before he represses it. If that's it the again. case, if that's the case, why, he's doing this why isn't he lying at that time though? Like, how, how can we make sure that he's not lying? At this because point? his uh, his actions contradict his words. At the start of the scene, he insists that the reason that um, he whored himself out was for money. He thought he said he thought about it logically. It wasn't because he cared about that boy. Not at all. 
he says that to Casca. It's because it's uh, it will uh, it will allow him to achieve his dream faster. But then when Casca mentions the boy, he starts shaking and he says, "But," and then he starts rambling about um, the men that have died for him. And the most the most obvious um, uh, evidence that he's he's not lying here is that when Casca goes to comfort him, Griffith says. Don't worry, it was nothing, and he goes back to his own self. He's not admitting that um, those true emotions. He doesn't want Casca to see that. So it's not a projection of any sort of lie. It was his true feelings that he let out um, momentarily that uh, he's embarrassed about. And I'd also like to say, and this is the most important thing, that when Casca goes to hug Griffith from behind um, in that lake scene, that is a direct parallel, even compositionally, to when Guts ac accidentally breaks down with Casca during sex and he momentarily allows himself to uh, reveal his sexual trauma and what happened with Donovan. Casca hugs him from behind in the exact same way. And unlike Griffith, he didn't say, it don't worry, it was nothing. He accepts her... Uh, her offer, her um, offer for affection. So this parallel proves that just like Guts in that scene, Griffith has momentarily allowed himself to be vulnerable and show his true state of mind to Casca. But then he doesn't let her in past that. He goes back, unlike Guts, and that's part of the the parallel between Guts and Griffith. So that is part okay. of the way that we know that he's li he's not lying there. Well, let's not try and guess the mental state of whether someone is lying or telling the truth. It's a little more complicated that our simple little minds can't. Why? Can't why, why hold on. Why not? Way. Why can't we um, figure out from context? You, why can't we? Because do that? you're you're speculating a mental state. You have no idea the causes okay, that, of, of effects. That, that, that's what you always do with media, unless it's uh, unless it's spelled out for you by by the author. You have to use a bit of inference, but the evidence is absolutely well, overwhelming. In in the in the last video, no, no, it's not. No, it's not. In the no, it's not. It, well, I'll I'll give you some more if you want it. But in the very well, last, I, I'd response, like to talk just for a moment. Okay, that's okay. That's I'm sorry. Because because you've been sort of like going, well, he's this, he's that. It's like okay, slow down there. That's okay. I'm you sorry. You sort of went through that. And, oh, no, you have a lot to say. That's why we brought you on. It's just that that scene can be interpreted in many different ways. And I do believe the, the, the boy represents, or the, the dead soldier boy, represents that, that aspect that, oh, yeah, these, these are people who are, have died. But you miss the context of that scene as well. He's just been found out by Casca the day prior that he was sleeping with uh, Gannon. And he got, got found out. He's like, oh, crap. And he goes to wash himself on the, the day after. I assume it's the day after. I don't know when exactly it was. I'm assuming that's because he feels guilty or he feels dirty. He did this horrible thing because you go to the, the river to wash yourself. That's just obvious, I would assume, unless he just goes to the river every day or every week or whatever the day is. And he asks him, or she asks him, hey, you mean like that boy? That's what happened because that's part of the, the scenario of what happened. He says, no, I don't. I came to this conclusion rationally, which brings less risk, losing hundreds of soldiers in 10 battles or snaring a rich old man. So he's... That's his logical reason for doing that, okay? And to me, that means, oh, I've encountered death so many times. It's not bothering me. But this thing with this old man creeped me the hell out. That's a very simple explanation. I'm not, I'm not trying to delve into his mental state. I'm not trying to figure out if he's, you know, feeling dirty. He, he might be physically dirty. I don't know. Maybe that guy did a number on his ass. I have no clue. Okay. okay. But um, it's it's straightforward for me. Okay. Well, okay? how so, do you rec reconcile that with the the next couple of pages where he starts tearing his arms out while talking about what he can do for the sake of the dead and the children that have died for him, the hundreds thousands of lives that hang in the balance. He's telling himself well, he can't be unclean. What well, is that about? No, if no, he's no, not no, no, no. Guilt? He's not actually. He's saying. He, well, let me just read that for you. Down here. Um, to realize my dreams, I will perch on top of their corpses it is a blood smeared dream. After all, I don't regret or feel guilty about it. And the manga is slightly different, but it's pretty much the same meaning. What translation are you using? What translation are you using? I have no, I have no idea. Oh, well, which, I'm using the official in. Dark Horse translation, but uh, I don't know which oh, one you're uh, using. Okay. They, they mean pretty much the same thing. Uh, but to risk thousands of lives while never getting myself dirty, it's not a dream that can be so easily realized. He's not saying... 
I should get my hands dirty. He's saying, it's not a dream that can be so easily realized, meaning I could get my hands dirty, but I don't have to, but no, no, pretty no, much no, no, I, no, no. I have to. No, he's saying, but for hundreds, thousands of lives to hang in the balance and myself alone not to be unclean, what I want won't enter my grasp so easily as that. He's saying that he doesn't want to uh, ha be hands off about it. He feels guilty if so many of these people are dying for him and um, he doesn't have to well, go through any of that. It's a classic self-harm thing. That's why he's self-harming. It's part of well, why no, he's no, self-harming. No, he feels guilty about you, it. You sell, you, yeah, you feel guilty, but you could feel guilty for something else. You could feel uh, disgusting with himself with having to sleep with Gannon. Okay, then why that is, could be, what's he talking about here then? Why did he bring up the dead? Why did he bother bringing up the dead? Because clearly... Because he's talking to Casca. Okay, but, but we just saw him um, say, don't worry, that was nothing. And then in yeah. the dream speech and everywhere else, he says, I don't care about my men. So this one moment that he starts talking about his men, he then... He then Casca tries to um, comfort him about that. Yeah. And then he says exactly. it was nothing. He tries yeah, to hide because she holds that him. Because it was yeah, the she's truth. Like, Don't worry about it. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, and she he, hugs him. He's, he's like, obviously not telling the truth there. How do you know that? Are you joking? Are you? Listen, he just said it's nothing. Do I have? Is he? Why is he lying? Because he had this soliloquy be, or be, because, a big poem um, about because he's scratching because he dug his fingers so deep into his arm that they're bleeding. It's not nothing. Okay. He just doesn't Where does want that to come acknowledge from? Where does, that to Casca. When you say guilt, because when I when I talk to people who have had self harm or they try to commit suicide, it doesn't come from a place of empathy or empathizing with someone else. Like, oh, I understand what my I don't know how hundreds, if not thousands, of people are going through. I don't know how he empathizes with that. I don't know how it's even physically possible to get to know someone and emphasize their dreams and blah, blah, blah. It seems almost impossible. Maybe, it seems more maybe likely. Maybe you're not very empathetic. I don't know. No, I've, I went through psychology. I, I've talked to people who have some serious issues. Uh, I've done a few studies, but you're it's saying not, it's, you know, it's, it's impossible not... for a commander to feel immense guilt about a lot of people that they have killed. They've led to death in, in terms of empathy, That's where you're rationalizing, you think a you think you can't empathize with command? strangers? Not to the point of self harm, no. Really? Really? I've never well, okay, met well, someone he, who tried well, to commit okay. suicide well, or tried to hurt themselves because of other person's problems. I've seen people who are stressed out. I've seen doctors who are stressed out. I don't really I've care what you've seen. This is a story, out. and he's 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 self harming based on, uh, because of the dead child soldier that he knew, not a stranger. He's 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 self harming because he knows okay. it's his fault that he died. Is is empathy a good or bad thing? It's it's, good, what is it? It's a good thing. Is it is it always a good thing? Um, not when it uh gets in the way of logic, but uh, yeah. Okay, generally so you're right. There are there are there is positive and negative empathy. Negative empathy is not really studied in psychology very well. It is there, but it's not addressed. If empathy is a good thing, we're, we're generally speaking of the general description or definition. If empathy is a good thing, how can it hurt you? Because it can make you feel, well, because empathy allows you to um, uh, walk in someone else's shoes. It allows you to feel things other people are feeling. And uh, when you have empathy, you understand how other people might be suffering. And if you then... Empathy is a rationalization of what someone's going through. You're not, sympathy is where you actually feel what someone is going okay, through. Okay, well, you feel I... What they're going through. No, that's not true. That's affective empathy. There's a difference between cognitive and affective empathy. Cognitive empathy is where you understand that someone might be sad. Affective empathy is where you feel it. And okay, well, now we're getting into nuances of what empathy is then. Okay, okay well, it's I'm a semantic saying, argument. I can... He feels bad, okay, because he knows that someone was hurt and it's his fault. Well, no, no, guilty. either empathy is a positive emotion or it's a negative emotion or it's something in between. Like, what is it? Well, it depends Do on the context. Feel... Okay, I'm a nice person. I empathize with everyone I come across, even the downtrodden, even the ones who commit suicide. And some days I get stressed out because I deal with so many people and I got to take a break. Okay, now some people break down, some nurses I've, I've seen uh, just can't take it. They, they, they just collapse. 
Okay. I haven't met anyone who's self-harmed themselves. Maybe they're just more mature or maybe, but a lot of kids that uh, came into the clinic were, were depressed. Like they felt nothing. And to feel something, they try to commit suicide, which is a little different than, than having negative emotion. But they always came from a place that was bad. Like something bad happened to them or you know, someone like some family problem or some relative or that sort of thing. It always came from a place of negativity, never from a positive world. So they never were empathetic towards a family member who had a loss or a friend who died. Not to the point of them wanting to hurt themselves. I mean, it's, it's possible. Okay. Was it their fault? In the... Was it their fault that a family member died? Have you have no, you, no, have you met have, well? Have you met someone uh, where someone else has died, and that person knows it's their fault, and they feel so bad about it that they uh, self harm? Like I don't. I really don't care about your um, about your personal experience. No, no, it's like, not. No it's offense. not the exact experience I'm referring to. I'm talking about empathy being a positive or negative thing. Because if it's negative, if you have a negative emotion or a negative experience that causes something bad, then self harm can occur. And sometimes it's so extreme you go to depression, and then that occurs. I've never encountered uh, like a well. There's brothers. There's uh, nurses and some some journalists that that were like so sensitive that they hurt themselves. I've never encountered that. Only when stress was a thing. Only when stress was a factor. Like a doctor was too stressed out. Any uh, ODs on or barbiturates or whatever. That that is where I'm seeing that from. Because if you if you're coming from something negative, you get negative out. You, if you come from a place of caring and sensitivity, unless you're overburdened, then like I, I can't see someone self harming as a result of that. To me, this is in this scene. He's feeling disgust. He's feeling a little bit of guilt, probably. I don't know exactly. I'm trying to guess what emotion that would equate to. But I can't really figure out what's in his mind, right? I really don't understand I, your uh, positive, negative, empathy, dichotomy thing that's going on here. No, it's not a dichotomy. It's just if empathy is good, good things come from it. If I can understand what's going through someone's no. scenario and it's a bad thing, that does not cause me in some sort of weird way to hurt myself it does now, if you are the reason they are suffering and you can feel that if you if you as an individual are the reason for that person suffering okay and you empathize with them you are the problem and you feel okay, self-hatred so, for that and you so can can the god can the well can the god hand see what's in his in griffith's mind or soul or whatever yes they can they uh they okay. show him a uh a, they show him visions in the eclipse where they basically lay out his entire history and past motivations, and then they right. use the fact that they can read minds to uh, inf right. inform their lie right. that the Hawks consented as well. Okay, so Griffin, like once they have the, the the whole thing with her, he's walking up to the castle with the girl or the, the soldier boy. He says, "Was that an illusion or an illusion?" And Ubik says, "Not an illusion. It is the reality in your consciousness reaching for the castle in the heavens?" Stacking bodies to reach the highest summit in your destiny, stepping on thousands of your comrades' boat bodies, and tens of thousands of bodies or comrades paved for you in turn. And then he says, all while disregarding who or what they were, you trampled your way here. Now, maybe the translation is different, or I have a different version of that. To me, that says you didn't care. You didn't care who they were. You didn't care what they were. Let me go to the chapter. Sure. It's the whole it's the whole passage. It's the whole, you know, creepy scene with all the God hand in there. They're, they're showing the one with guts was interesting. That over was thousands of your comrades corpses over tens of thousands of corpses. They in turn ama amassed over those corpses with no identities, no names. You have trampled as you came with but one desire in mind. There is no indication that he doesn't care here. Uh, I don't know which translation you're using, but it's uh, widely accepted that the Dark Horse official translation is the most accurate. Uh, you might be using an older translation that I've looked at before, and they, they have a lot of dodgy translations. But um, the, 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 entire, the, the entire... The context oh, is okay, still well, the same. The anime. It's not this, the same. This is the anime. It's not the same, because they add little lines of dialogue that aren't uh, accurate. Um, the entire last chapter was them showing him bodies of the people he's 
he had killed and him crying about that. Then in the very next page, they talk about how uh, the Hawks will forgive him for being sacrificed. They will welcome him warmly. Then he can go on living because he can't. That's Slan talking. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's the other character. Yeah, right? that's Slan talking. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just saying that's from the anime. I, I don't know the exact anime okay, well, representation. The whole context of the eclipse is a realization and an epiphany that he does actually care about his men. Uh, he always has. He he does. He's not going to repress that anymore. He's going to internalize and accept okay. that empathetic guilt and act upon how? that. How does he? How does he care about all the men that he's never met, or the hundreds, if not thousands, of men that have died for him? Like, how does he? How can he concern himself with all of their dreams? What do you mean? How? He does. He just does. How do you physically? How do you physically? He just do knows them? thousands of people. Yeah. No, he doesn't know them, but he knows that they had their own dreams. I don't. I don't. I don't understand. It's as if you like you can empathize with strangers on the, on the TV or something. It's like well, you only empathize with I people can... who you know intimately. Uh, no, I'm just saying that there's so many that you're supposed to care for them. When in reality, we know that comrades, uh, he calls comrades, are just comrades. They're not anything more important well, than that. They're well, he these... knew a lot of them, and he knew his comrades, and he's acting on uh, their perceived he, consent. We, yeah, we introduced, I don't know, like five or six. I can't remember the, the, the Band of the Hawk main guys. But when he tells us that he loses hundreds every ten battles, that means it doesn't really bother him. It's not a big deal. Okay. Also, he's gone through so many. Also, I'd like to ask you this. Why are you a applying real life psychology to a character a fictional character that's been written? Maybe maybe this is a criticism you want to take up with Berserk and the author, that the way that Griffith has been written to care about tens of thousands of soldiers isn't accurate to real life by your interpretation. That's not necessarily a criticism of me, because the text indicates that he does care. You can't you can't appeal to real life uh, psychology or what sounds to be your own lived experience not possessing much I'm empathy not, apparently I'm not arguing no no I'm not arguing lived experience I'm using the actual words empathy and what it means and how you can actually care about 10 people's dreams or 100 people's dreams or a thousand people's dreams and apparently a thousand people's dead dreams it's it's a little strange to be able to do that and we don't know what they are I don't understand. out of the assumption I, that they all want to join him in the kingdom I mean, I, I empathize with millions of people in Ukraine right now who are like suffering. I empathize with that. Yeah, I think we think war is bad. War is generally bad. No yeah, one is no, saying, yeah, and I, and I feel that when I watch the news. I feel that. I empathize with that. I get teary eyed okay. sometimes. That okay, is well, so. It is okay. Well, but that still proves that it is possible for a human being to feel empathy for strangers for a lot of them because of their common humanity. Well, not just because of emotions, but because we have the capacity to rationalize what's happening. So when I, again, these words are not, they don't come out of the ether. You know, these, we have words for a reason. Like you were saying, uh, sociopathy or sociopath, like that has a, a psychological backing. Like we have to go back to the definition. When, I, when we say it's a narcissist, we know he's a narcissist. We have the definition. Okay, well, what's, your, what's your definition of empathy then? Being able to understand the emotional states of others. Okay, so uh, cognitive empathy. Okay, well, Griffith understands the emotional states of others. Okay, but what's what's cognitive empathy then? Cognitive empathy is being term. able to uh, understand that someone is that else psychology. Is pain. Yeah, that's psychology. That psychology. There's a distinction between. Okay, so between... you're using your psychology. So what's wrong with you okay. using your psychology and I can't use well, mine? Let's 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 argue the definitions then. Cognitive. Well, no, empathy. we're not going into semantics. What we're just saying the word empathy, about? and that's accepted. You accepted yours. Okay. We, I accepted. It. It's fine. Okay, well, what, what are you arguing then? This weird semantic argument. How are you undermining anything that I've said? I don't understand what you're doing. What are you talking well, about? Well, if we have... Okay, the, the thing with the Godhead, you see when they, they give this illusion, now maybe they're lying. Whenever you have a story where the God, the deus ex pops up, he says, okay, this is like, well, not necessarily like the writer on board moment, but they are telling you what's what, okay? This is how the world works. And when they say you don't care, for who or what they were. To me, that goes, oh, he doesn't care. Because God said so, or a God said so. But they the didn't say that. Be. 
The point is they didn't say that. Well, they didn't. They didn't the anime. Well, that's a mistranslation. Because which because part because, is? because because like, that contradicts which part are we the entire about? previous chapter. That is in the Japanese. Well, it's a Japanese version of the subtitles. I don't know who did the subtitles. How but can, which, how can which that part be... are we talking about again? The eclipse. The eclipse scene with the, the eclipse. Illusion. Yeah. The illusion. Okay. Yeah, Ubik says, all while disregarding who or what they were, you trampled your way here. I could put it on YouTube if you want. It's from YouTube anyway. Okay, well, it's how, the, how can... Episode 24. There's a way we can find out whether that translation is accurate. We can look at other scenes, like from the previous chapter. Yeah, but that's... that's where that's, the I mean, yeah. No, I, let, me, let, me, oh. let me read a bit of it for you. This scene is um, the same whether it uses certain terminology. No, it's, no, it's not idea. because... No, because the fact that... Um, Ubik in the very previous chapter showed him a vision of the dead child and then when Griffith says I'm sorry and Ubik says um, what a thing to say you're the one that did that to them um, you are the reason that all their dreams are uh, uh, are no longer uh, going to come into fruition how can Ubik be appealing to um, Griffith's guilt towards their deaths, but then simultaneously also say you never cared. That doesn't make any sense. Well, if he never the cared, they that... wouldn't have bothered showing him the men that he did care about to try and convince him, would they? If if Griffith was this sociopathic character that didn't really care, then they wouldn't need to create all this pretense about the Hawks' consent and how and the pile of corpses. They just tell him. Hey, if you sacrifice them, you'll get you'll you'll become God. Do it, and he would do it. He needed to have been brought to this um, headspace by appealing to his empathetic guilt. That's what the entire chapter's about. So this little yeah, but, mistranslation it contradicts everything well, no. else in the sequence. So it's not it's not a thing, and the, the most we, accurate well, translation doesn't include that. Okay, but Griffith says, but I never forced anyone to come along. This is part of the whole old woman illusion where he's talking to her and she's saying, well, you did all this. This is all you. And it's not just in the illusion. As we go through, I think it's from 1 to 30, whenever, when does the eclipse happen? I can't remember. It's 38? I can't remember the exact number. But even throughout with Guts, with the other characters, they're always saying, you're doing this. 77, sorry, that's way off. As, as we go through the scenes where uh, Griffith is killing the, the queen in her, in her little circle and the guts is talking, it's like, hey, we're, you're doing this for a reason. I've killed hundreds for you. What's, what's a few other extra here? It doesn't matter what, where we do it. This is for your dream. Like, stop thinking this way. Like, there's always this, this mention of this, of this dream. Like, he's a great guy. Everyone can't believe how amazing Griffith is. We're going to follow his dream. So that's an ongoing foreshadowing, I guess, for this event, you could say. But it's clear that that's part of the story, that this is a dream everyone's striving for. And everything's going pretty well until we get to the uh, the King of Midland and what happens there. So it's it's kind of like everyone's along for the ride. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you if you want if you want to if you want to argue that uh, Griffith didn't care about his men and he didn't care about their consent, as you're claiming, then you have to um, disprove the idea. Uh, you have to disprove what I just said when I gave uh, textual evidence that um, they told him that the Hawks would forgive him. You need to answer this question. Why? So when Slan just says that? Why did Slan reassure Griffith that the Hawks would forgive him for being sacrificed if Griffith didn't care in the first place? Why did she do that? Because Slan is a bit. What is she like? Uh, the god of goddess of. What is she? I can't remember. Lust. The goddess of lust? lust. Yes. Okay, so maybe she's appealing to some of his emotions. I have no idea. Uh, but this is an illusion. Uh, whatever they say is obviously not literal. Even when we say, or of all while disregarding who or what they were, you trampled your way here. So did he disregard them? I don't know. That's part of the, the, the speech. So I can assume it's the, it's the truth because the God is saying it. Actually, I, like, I have a question to you, Siklid. Like, uh, do you believe like all apostles get rid of like uh, their 
empathy once they do the transformation. Uh, you gonna bring up the uh, slug count? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, because I because like it, it got, God hand or whatnot, they, they are essentially just having the same transformation. That's good. I'm so, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's what my next video is gonna be about. I'm I'm really into this now. Okay. Um. <laughs> but like, the, how do you explain that? The um. The slug count lost some of his empathy. Um, in oh, okay. The, yes, in the um, hold on, let me go to it. Because uh, I've written this all down. Um, um, in in the count's second audience with the god hand, Ubik tells him that by sacrificing Teresia, he will shed, quote unquote any last remnants of his humanity, end quote, indicating that he still had some left and that another important sacrifice would complete the process. This indicates that the power of the transformation's psyche-altering, empathy-inhibiting effects are compounded and magnified by an increasing greater number of sacrifices, and this explains entirely why the Count is still able to feel some compassion for his daughter Teresia, but Femto can't feel anything. Also, Griffith is turned into a literal god hand, not an apostle, so of course the transformation is much stronger for Femto. There's about, I, I, I've listed about 10 different reasons why the slug count cannot be used to prove that Griffith had um, a choice and did nothing wrong. There are so many reasons when you look at it from the lens of informed consent and informed knowledge of, um, of the sacrifice. For one... The Count had been through it before. He knew exactly what was on, what was go what what was happening. Um, the God Hand never manufactured the consent of Teresia with the Count. Um, the Count was never mentally ill. While he was um while he was on death's door, he still had full possession of his faculties. Um, the God Hand actually told the Count that uh, he would lose his empathy, uh from the transformation. The God Hand never mentioned that to Griffith. It's only told to him by the idea of evil after the fact. So there was no consent to him uh, losing his empathy. Uh, Griffith wasn't told about the vortex of souls. Um, and, and with the count, it's literally in the backdrop. There are so many of uh, there are so many ways in which the count was much more informed about the terms and conditions of the contract in a way that Griffith just wasn't. Apostles exist. I, I think they very clearly told the uh, Griffith that all of the hawks will be sacrificed. Yes, but they told him that they would uh, forgive him for being sacrificed. They're manufacturing, and, and he consent. believed it, and he believed it completely. Yes. Yes, he, I mean, he made and, the choice to sacrifice them. Yes, and I would understand your argument that he believed that, and therefore he is stupid, if not for the the compromised mental state that he was in at the no, time. No, he's not stupid. Like he completely understood all of these things like they gave him the power to not have those they didn't, things like they, back him they didn't that. give him a choice to refuse a sacrifice they did not yes, give him they didn't they didn't they well they did they, he, they did, said, they, did they force him into that they did not force him but well they kind of did by appealing to fate and telling him <laughs> that it would happen anyway but they tell him that he will and he become, gave in he will become a corpse if he doesn't sacrifice them they also say, but I don't believe that Griffith is evil enough to be condemned uh, if he acted on the will of his men. Because the distinguishing factor um, between the Hawks dying on the battlefield for Griffith and dying in the Eclipse is the consent argument. You said it yourself. Um, the Hawks uh, willingly uh, chose to risk their lives for Griffith on the battlefield but they did not consent to be eaten by literal demons. The distinction, the moral distinction is the consent argument. And I'm saying that from Griffith's perspective, he acted on their consent, so he did not do anything wrong. Does that make sense? No, because you're talking about no, different contexts. One of them is in war and battle. They're they're paid to fight in a war. They didn't they didn't get paid. They didn't made made by human weapons. weapons. Like not, none of these fantasy elements. Like the only fantasy element that they ever saw was Zod and that Vyad, like whatever the rapist uh, guy. 
Okay, but you're making a, di a yeah, distinction awesome. without a difference there. Like, what does it matter that they're being uh, eaten by demons versus being hacked to pieces context. by swords? Like, as, okay, like but the, what about the context? Word. What about the context uh, makes it so that Griffith uh, did more did evil in the eclipse? The fact that uh, they were eaten by demons as opposed to being hacked to pieces by swords and skewered by spears. What's the difference there? Is it uh, whoa, 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 whoa. sold out, sold out to be reborn as this demigod? You, you think there's no difference between fighting on the battlefield that you signed up for and then suddenly being in a demon realm and being eaten by demons? Um, because of the consent that uh, no, and was I, given and by I, a, a many player. And I would say that that is part of the thematic point of the eclipse is that um, the Hawks never cared about the consent of anyone that they murdered, and now they are being murdered. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. What does that mean? What it, it, it's, a, it's a massive tangential point, which will be another uh, uh, video in the coming future about the hypocrisy of the Hawks and um, the Eclipse basically being a, a, a representation of the coercive nature of the, of the, of the battlefield, essentially. Um, but you, you just said the difference between the battlefield and the Eclipse is that the Hawks chose to join the battlefield. You prove my point. And Griffith acted on the idea that the Hawks would consent to be sacrificed after the fact. I'm not saying that yeah, they actually wrong. did. Th that is... Yes, I know. But the point is, in that case, the God Hand are at fault for manipulating Griffith. They are the willing agent of Why? evil. Because they lied about it while knowing that the Hawks wouldn't actually consent to be sacrificed. Griffith lied acted... About... Wait a second. What did they lie about? They lied about the Hawks forgiving him for being sacrificed um, in the afterlife. After the fact, so they realized that, Griffith's reasoning. Yeah, but that's 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 after the fact. That's like, hey, they're okay with getting eaten by demons. They were like, really? I mean, I mean, I mean, they may not be in the moment, but after the fact, once they realize his reasoning, um, they'll be like, oh, okay, that was okay then. I feel like that's totally reasonable. No. Even if they are now them. crushed by this. I'm not saying they actually would. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that that's what the God Hands claimed. Griffith acted on their consent. Therefore, he did nothing wrong in the eclipse. The God so, Hand are at fault for manufacturing that consent, and that's what led to their so, deaths. Uh, okay, I, I don't think like this is leading anywhere. So... <sighs> Do you think like Griffith ends after he accepted the offer, and like there's only Famto afterwards? Um, I believe that Griffith lost his empathy and human compassion. No, no, no. As in, like Griffith, as like he was, like like Griffith, Griffith as he character, was. Yes, it's like com it's completely different after the transformation. No, he's not completely different. He still has his memories, and he still well, possesses. No, no, no. As in, like he's like a different character, isn't he? Uh, no. I, I, the reason I distinguish between Femto and Human Griffith is because people use the actions of Femto to inform their analysis of Human Griffith. They say that he was always that evil and sociopathic. That's the reason. I, I'm I meaning to ask because, like in later chapters, there's a moment when he. Well, I, I don't know how much you, did you read of the manga? Like how far? Uh, did you I'm like ten chapters. The, the last chapter I read was a couple of chapters after Griffith sheds his tear. Um, uh, so it's Island, like yeah. somewhat some of the latest ones, yep, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, do you remember like the chapter when Guts finally finds the armor and like he dons the thing? Uh, vaguely, maybe. Okay, like the there's an old witch in the magical forest that uh, the demons finally invaded. Yeah, and then uh, the entire tree is on fire. And then Zod appears, and the uh, gods ask him that, like, "Hey, uh, whose orders are these?" And then he just says, "Like, yeah, the only master of the Inhumans, Griffith." Yeah. So why would Griffith order the execution? Like, why would? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This Griffith was... like burn uh, someone alive. Yeah, this is a problem with um, my initial video that I I must admit. Um, I didn't okay. um, explicitly point out that, I, that when I used the, the the name Femto, I was also referring to post transformation Griffith. Um, okay, okay, that, the that's transformation. Why I to yeah, ask. The okay. transformation 
cause him to lose his um, human compassion. And of course, regardless of what form he was in after that point, he still lacked that. He was still the same character, basically. But yeah. I thought that was like perfectly in line with the character that like he was displaying in the Golden Age. Like when he set uh, flames on the queen. And but, the queen all the cons- but the queen had done something wrong. The queen had tried to murder him beforehand. He was... Uh, well, well oh, hold, sure, up, yeah. hold up. Hold up. Hold up. In that, in that scenario, he had no idea the queen was doing anything. That's not he true. Planned to kill, he planned to kill the queen a week before any of the events at the... No, 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 ball, no, no. no. That's, that's not true at all. Um, uh... Griffin. He blackmailed the uh, Foss. Yeah, he did because he. he <laughs> that, that's how he didn't... got the info. No, beforehand. what he what he sent to Foss was um, a letter. It was a contract that uh, the Queen had signed with Foss, saying we're going to plan to kill Griffith. Griffith sent the Count that letter that he had stolen from uh, Foss to prove that he knew about the um, about the plan to poison him. Griffith only acted once he got that um, that documentation proving that uh, the queen was about to murder him. Well, so it was one hundred percent self defense. This is no. This is from chapter thirty two. Uh, he had no idea that the queen was doing it, and he was planning to kill the queen. That, I'm sure that's not what he group. said. Uh, he's talking to Fox. Okay, he said the first bit, right. but I'm sure he didn't say he was planning to kill the queen and her group before he got evidence. I'm sure he didn't say that because once well, he had the suspicion, he then went out of his way to get that documentation from Foss to it prove took, it, it because he needed the, that proof the, to be able to, uh, to 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 feel justified in going through with that, right? It took the captors a week to scope out the schedule of Foss's daughter. So that means at least a week was, was planned in, the, in advance. So okay, but, he says to Foss... I had no idea that the queen was trying to poison me. Until he found that documentation, the blood oath he confiscated. Right. So he planned this out before the queen was going to do anything. Okay, but what's the timeline of uh, when the queen plans to uh, to do it? What's the timeline of uh, Griffith? Oh, I don't know exactly. Well, you I don't, don't know, so it. you're you're acting as if um, he planned to kill uh, the queen and then like. Uh, the day before the, the fire, um, he got his proof or she she decided to actually do it. He had his suspicion based on the way Foss was acting. He then... He... And, and in fact, the scene where Griffith got suspicious of Foss was the scene from like way before, back before, back just after Julius died. He gave him these weird eyes and he was like, from that point on, he started doing some digging. Griffith did because he was like... Foss is definitely out to murder me, and that's where he found the the uh, the conspiracy to kill him. That's where he got right. the uh, the inkling. I, I the thing is that this was happening well before. Like this was all planned before. Like he was aware of of Foss and his supposed schemes, or at least his insight, because he could look at him and see that oh, your eyes tell me you are afraid of me, which means you either want to kill me or erase me or be subordinate to me. Yes, but the fact so he, the fact remains that he required that documentation to be able to go through with it. Just because he was um, stalking Foss's uh, roots uh, as, as to where he traveled doesn't necessarily indicate that he was always planning to kill the queen. I mean, he was su- suspicious of Foss for months, so of course he was um, spying on his movements. Do you know what I mean? It's very no, clear. The point, that that, the point of that blood oath um, uh, documentation was to say that Griffith needed proof to be able to uh, uh, kill the queen throughout the entire Golden Age arc. The only people that he kills intentionally are people that have already tried to murder him. I mean, people bring this up all the time. Evidence of Griffith's um, sociop- sociopathy and um, how awful of a person he was. Um, they say that of course Griffith was also always like Femto. Look at all the horrible things he did. He, he assassinated Julius. He, he, assass- he burned the queen alive. And it's like, these people all tried to murder him first. Griffith only assassinated Julius after getting proof of the poisoned arrow that had been shot at him. And he only assassinated the queen after he got written documentation that she was, oh, she was going to murder him. He only set the place on fire after he got poisoned. Do you, know what I'm, do you understand what I'm saying? 
Yeah, I don't know the timeline for when the Queen did that whole. Yeah. Okay. Well, we might as well move book. on then. Yeah, but it, it, they were doing things well in advance. I know that. Yeah. Um. All right. I think we sort of messed up our order here for the, the video, but that's fine. <laughs> oh yeah, we're yeah, watching a video. <laughs> a bit over the place myself. Yeah. See, I don't even know if we need to go over the video. I mean, I feel like uh, we're doing a good job of going over things uh, uh, right here. Yeah, it's... we we can. I, I think we can go straight to the rape or like the femto argument. Okay, I mean, do you guys agree that Griffith lost his empathy in the transformation? Do you do you guys agree with that? Uh, I... Smut, but you don't really understand what I mean by Griffith I... and Femto being different, do you? I I still believe that like this, <laughs> this is a hat cannon that like he has this empathy. It's more like pity that like he was feeling towards that kid, and I think like it's like a bit of a mistake from Miro to do that scene. But I always saw it like that was like his last bit of like humanity that like he was just like very young. That that but we have been over this point already. Uh, I, I, like he t t quite certainly like lost his humanity when he turned uh, to that god hand figure but ultimately he made the choice I'm still standing by that point but the choice uh, doesn't matter because it was not informed you have to care about informed consent yes we have gone through that like half an hour well if you don't care yeah. about informed consent I don't know what to tell you um no, he, he chose to, to kill people. Okay, okay? but a it child can he, choose when... to have sex with an adult. That doesn't necessarily he, he mean is an adult. To he that. is an adult in the eclipse. Okay, like, this well, is... how, how old is he? This 22 is, yeah, or this 23? Is, this is another point I, w I would say, is that um, the reason why, a part of the reason why a child can consent to a lot of things with an adult is because there is a power dynamic in terms of the understanding of sex and all that sort of stuff. There's a there is a How, there does is this a, play into this right now? Well, I'll I'll I'll, I'll get to uh, it. Is this about the lake scene or no 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 in the eclipse? And I would say that the power dynamic between the God Hand and Griffith is more extreme, more severe, more coercive than that between an adult and an unknowing minor. Let me defend that point really quick. Griffith is a suicidal, emaciated. Um, a suicidal, emaciated man in a hallucinogenic state being confronted with beings and concepts beyond his comprehension. The God Hand are seemingly omniscient, eldritch beings who would have been shown to be able to read minds. That dynamic in terms of informed knowledge uh, and just, just that power dynamic in general is so, is so wide that um, any... any um, that you can't argue that his choice was uh, informed or that he consented because um, the accepting party and the offering party weren't standing on equal footing. So it's too coercive to be That's considered irrelevant. valid. Why it's is that irrelevant? They're not coercing him into doing it. They're not coercing him into doing they did anything. They're saying, look, they, they did, they, look at this crazy illusion I'm giving you and all the choices you made led up to here. I did, actually, at the end, I did actually get a... Uh, a response video saying this that the God Hand never coerced Griffith because the definition of coercion is threatening death and the God Hand did threaten death in chapter 77 they tell him that if he does not pile up the corpses he himself will become a corpse that can and reasonably be considered the, to be the a the value threat. of his life higher than the value of his men no he didn't because he acted on their yes what he, he did no he, he didn't did. because he acted on he, what he perceived to be the Hawks' consent said death. yes death I said death is, more important than the lies of his men so he wanted to live okay but that doesn't patrick bateman didn't uh, do any of those murders like he just thought like the point of like is not liking uh Hugh lewis and the news is like too much <laughs> either either way at the end right before he could he actually says i offer them all or i sacrifice he says out of all the thousands of comrades and tens of thousands of enemies only one you and you alone you made me forget my dream He's okay how's that, that relevant that's a very clear statement. He's not hallucinating. Okay, what's he saying not, there? What's he saying now? He's saying he's talking about his friend Guts, who just popped up out of nowhere, and he's like, "Hey, buddy, I'm going to sacrifice you." Yeah, so, you so that no, that is uh, the moment where he finally reaches the epi the epiphany that he always did care about Guts, and that 
he'd been lying to himself that entire time. The the last going to kill him. No, the last expression on his yes. face is melancholic. It's not that of spite or hatred. He knows he's going to kill exactly. him. But here's the thing as well. Yeah. In in Thank the you. previous chapter, the God Hand show an out of context memory of guts saying, "Hey, it's okay to do what you're doing right now because that's for your dream." So they're manufacturing guts's consent as well. They're that is. That is a reference, not a, a direct reference, but the chapter 32 with Guts is talking about... Yes, yes, I know. And, and, and they, they put it out of context uh, because they know that the Griffith values message. what it's, Guts thinks. Because It's the same message that he gave in the chapter 32. Yes, but the point is that... So did they lie to him? Ain't this part of the path to yes, your they did, dream? Because, you yes. believe that, don't you? Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's the one. Yeah. Yes, but the point is... They are using Guts's words because they know that Griffith still cares about what Guts thinks and what Guts uh, believes in. So Griffith yeah, that's why Griffith is a great character because, like, he isn't a completely like <laughs> he still had like some feelings for okay, Guts. But again, yeah. it doesn't matter that he killed them why? in and of itself because he was led to believe that they would forgive him and that they would consent no, that, after you're, the you're fact. You're putting way too much onus on that one paragraph by slan it's very important okay. it's the yeah, last so thing the they rest of it well the, the, so the, the, the rest, rest the rest of it. of it doesn't contradict that that's the last thing they say to griffith before he goes through with the sacrifice why doesn't it contradict it because because it doesn't saying uh you should sacrifice these people doesn't contradict his reasoning for doing that well, there, she's adding on top of, well, if you kill these people, they're going to forgive you. That's something okay, new. So That's we new know, so we know that he did care about their consent. They wouldn't have bothered bringing it up if he didn't. That could give him a little warm, fuzzy feeling. Oh, they care about me. Oh, they're going to forgive me if I kill them. Isn't that cute? Or he's completely blitzed and he has no idea what the hell she's saying. He's like, oh, that's great. They're going to make me feel good after I become whatever. So no, the, all this, all the data matters to what the Godhead is saying. And none of the data part, contradicts I mean, the fact that they did manufacture the Hawks' consent, and the Hawks' consent I, is the this, distinguishing this is, factor morally. This is this is getting a little silly. Consent to what? To kill people? Uh, yeah. Well, consent okay. to be sacrificed so, so that Griffith can then go on to achieve his dream to ensure that their efforts weren't for nothing. Again, I go yeah, back to the lake that's scene. Great. That's great. Yes. That's great. I, I don't care how great they sell the, the the idea of becoming a god or or this or that he still sacrifices he knows the cost he's okay, like oh i just have to kill my men at that Great. at that point you have to go back to the mens rea i know that you talked about that in your i last don't care video. about mens rea well you did in your last you about, did in the response video well, not, well right now this is not a law issue right we're just talking it's not about a law it. issue it's a morality What's issue a lot of law is based well, is yes, a law issue. but a lot of law is based on moral principles um Griffith requires the criminal intent, the selfish. Really? Yes, he does. The selfish. No, he does. If, Why does he need criminal if we're intent going to choose? To, if we're going to make the normative statement that Griffith was selfish in Under sacrificing. I'm not making the legal argument. I'm making the moral then argument. Why are you using a I legal think. term? Because, because, <laughs> because law is based on morality. I'm using legal uh, examples in practice to um, substantiate my moral arguments. If, it's, like, it's like me talking about the moral concept of voluntary inhibition by using the legal example. I'm just using an example to show how it works. I'm still making the moral argument. Yeah, but this is an insight into his mind and gods are showing him what it is he's been doing with his life. And the context of, let's say, the chapter 32 or other chapters saying, this is your dream, you should follow it. That's great. You should follow your dream. By the way, your dream costs all these people to ritualistically kill them so you could become a god. This is kind of like Mira going, you know what? The, the story has been going pretty well for Band of the Hawk. They've been getting bigger and bigger and better. And there's one little hiccup. Everything falls apart. They lose 80% of their men over the course of a year because Griffith is all hung up and they don't know what to do. I'm assuming he cared about all their dreams that, you know, the people who left or died during that one hour, one year he was tied up. And all of a sudden he's like, hey, you want to get supercharged? Do you want to become awesome again? He's like, okay, what do I have to do? Kill these people. 
but it's okay because and they'll be okay with it. It's no different from what it, how it's always been. The Hawks have always... It is, it is very different. The context is I very know, different. But I'm, that's I know, but that's what said. the God Hand is telling him. I know that the actual context is different. I'm talking about from Griffith's perspective, his motivation. That um, it's how it's always been. The Hawks have always um, been willing to his risk their lives for Griffith and, the same. and his dream. Um, his dream has never changed. His motivation has never changed. Okay, well, what, yeah, I know. He's always he's always been motivated by empathetic guilt. Yeah. No, no, what no. He's always point? motivated for his dream. He wants to have a and, and the reason he wants to achieve that dream so strongly is because so many people have invested themselves into it. We go back there's to no, the sunk cost There's no fallacy. evidence of that. I know you made a mention of that's the, that's him the, uh, having some sort of utopia or some sort of worker's paradise. I don't know what the hell the term was he used. Where is that in the video? I can't remember. It was for people. Does he actually use the term like the sunk cost? Fa the sunk cost people? fallacy is him saying, um, "But if for their sakes, for the sake of the dead, if there is something I can do, that thing is to win. I'll keep willing, yeah. winning to fulfill my dream to which they clung, putting their lives on the line." He's yeah, doing it's it kind of, for them. It's kind of sad to win when they're all dead. It doesn't quite make too much logic there. Okay, but the the see the um, God hand. Um, alluded to the fact that there was an afterlife they said that they'd forgive him after being sacrificed so there is an experience after death meaning that that's, death that's isn't the end way. no it's not that's you just very, brought it up you just brought it, you, just, you just brought it up it's a thing that happened no, you it did. is in the manga you, you brought up the afterlife it's in the that's manga, a very minor it's in the manga. Um, yeah it's in the manga i know they have a lived they they continue to experience after death well you said that um if they're already dead, then what does it matter if he achieves his dream? The fact is that they exist in the I, afterlife. No, if, and if he cares so much about these people to give them their dream, which is to achieve the kingdom with him, killing them eliminates that thing that they're trying to get, isn't it? No, because it still means that there, that there is no longer... That, their efforts have been brought into fruition because yeah, but they they don't get to get that. They don't get to achieve that dream. Yes, I know. They're and he he says that in the lake scene. He says, "If I know they're dead now, but if there is one thing I can do for them, for the sake of the dead, it is to win for their no, no, memory." No, no, not not for the okay. And once they're in the afterlife. They will forgive Griffith, welcome him warmly. That, They'll realize, that oh, is, you did that, that for us. That is an us. argument towards those who have just who have already passed, not the ones who are alive. You see? Yes, yeah, but... that's true. The people who are still alive are still alive. Okay, but there's no way for their dreams to come into fruition if he said no to the sacrifice. They, 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 their dreams aren't coming into fruition either way. The better alternative is... So he, so he chose a, a worse path, you're saying? In the eclipse, no. Yes, he, he well, did. no. He just killed Griffith, them all. Griffith had, so dreams are dead. Well, Griffith had the choice to either die, and the Hawks' dreams were dead, or live, and the Hawks' dreams were dead, but their efforts were still kind of meaningful in that Griffith's <laughs> kingdom was a change. What do you mean died. meaningful? Like, uh, what, what does uh, Griffith the achieve man, after the eclipse? Dead men have okay, but then, well, then his then his personality was changed, so. Uh, okay, yeah. well, let's get to that. Where where is his personality change? Where are you, where are you getting his at? His personality changes uh, when he transforms. Uh, I'll go right through it now. Um, okay. There seems to have been some confusion as to what I actually meant by Femto and Griffith being different people. You can tell I'm reading from a document now. Okay. So you seem to have got, got this idea in your head that I was saying that Griffith has some sort of split personality where two distinct entities exist inside his head at once and vie for control. I'm suggest I'm guessing I'm guessing that you got this idea based on characters from other media, but I never even slightly suggested this. Maybe the problem was that I used the name Femto to refer to post transformation Griffith as a whole, but I don't know. All I ever said was that Griffith had his ability to feel effective empathy and human compassion taken away from him by the transformation. Not all of his emotions, just his positive, light humanity. Think of it like this. Imagine there was a guy called Jim, who was the kindest, most empathetic person in the world, who would never hurt a fly. And then he has an accident that causes a traumatic brain injury, which causes him to lose his ability to feel effective empathy and human compassion. 
He then goes on to do some real greaseball shit. My point is to say that the actions of Jim post-head injury in no way reflect on his character from before that happened. And those actions so can be used as evidence that Jim was always that evil and sociopathic and always so had... So Griffith it. had some bad thing happen to him where his brain changed? Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you want, do you want, me, so do you want me to go becoming through that? Femto was a... No, no, no. I'm, you're making the, the guess that becoming Femto causes his brain to change. Not a guess. It's 100% canon. It's explained by the God Hand. That his brain has changed. Well, you can't... See, this is the thing you did in your last video as well. You applied real-life psychology to a fictional um, magical transformation, which I found to be kind of weird. Um, well, we need a basis of understanding the, the magical system of, that Mura puts together. You're, you're kind of basing all your empathy uh, arguments on reality, so it's... No, I'm not. Can we use I'm, I'm psychology parts for that? I'm basing it on how Griffith acted. Um, yeah, if you're, oh, if you're oh, saying okay. Femto is evil, right, or bad, or whatever, he's, he's lost his empathy, usually that's a result of some sort of dramatic occurrence, like a bad thing. Like, you don't go from... Um, let's say rags to riches because he's like an emaciated skeleton and he turns into this, I don't know, cape superhuman, whatever that is. So you don't go from good to bad, or sorry, from bad to good or bad to healthier and you become evil, right? Yes, that's not how yes, that works. yes I know that's true. Opposite. And a lot of people okay, okay. make the argument that when Griffith's personality changed in the transformation, that was natural character development, and he just decided that he didn't care. And I find that ridiculous. Normal people well, don't just do a complete 180 like that unless there is some magical transformation taking place. Right. So, and right, that, and that is that, what happened. We see that he was still a human when he made the choice. Oh, right. What did Obviously. he? What did? How, what did he choose? He chose to sacrifice all his okay, men. Okay, but what did he choose to become? His true self, well, Femto. Well, you're making the argument right now that Griffith chose to lose his empathy, and that is why he's accountable for losing his yes. empathy, right? Okay. So, what, if you want to prove this, you need to point out specifically where the God Hand told him that by saying yes to the sacrifice, he would lose his human compassion. What if if he if this he chose this thing, this like, like he, he they told him that like sacrifice them okay they're gonna die he knows that they're gonna die and like and then they lied to him and he accepted it even though he has been living the life that he did like constant yeah. manipulators politicians all of that and he he just like went with that how okay but, but, the the better answer is that or the simpler answer is he's always been this way. And he hasn't realized it yet. And it takes this, this I don't know, magical god people to say, listen, this is what you are. You've always killed people. You've always got them killed for you. And they've killed people for you. You manipulate. You you get what you want. You you flip out when you don't get what you want. Kind of sounding like a narcissist right now. If you can go through the list, but we don't have to. Hey, I'm going to supercharge you to do all the things you've always wanted to do. And then so. But these magical <laughs> super god people do not tell him that this is how he's always been. They tell him in the yes, transformation. They yes, they do. They tell him yes, in the. They, do. they tell him in yes. the. They tell him. Yes. They tell him. No. They tell him. No, they don't. They look, look at the illusion. Look at the illusion. They they say I can. Like, the entire description with the old lady. She's constantly saying you did this. this yes, is because you. she's playing on his empathetic guilt. The. I don't idea. care whether he's empathetic or not. No, but we're talking this, this about a actions. loss of human compassion. The God. We're talking about transforming into a God creature. Yes, and his losing. State, that's what we're talking state. about. We're talking about him losing his compassion. That's what we're talking about. You, you are then under said the that... assumption he has compassion. Let's assume he doesn't. Okay. Let's assume he has zero emotion. We we don't know what's in his mind. It's all one big mask. Okay. He's making a mask. He puts another one on. He cuts his arms. He puts another one on. It's all a game to him. He's very manipulative, okay? We don't know what's inside him. Anyone who looks at Griffith, even Casca, has no idea if he's depressed. When, when Foss looks at him, he has no... He thought Foss... Uh, what, what did Foss think when he first saw him? Uh, that uh, he had no idea about the, the death of Adonis. And it turns out he did. He just he was so stoic and freaking... Well, not stoic. I usually we relate that to uh, narcissism, reality, uh, personality disorder, where they don't feel anything. 
and he read him wrong. Mr. Foss, the guy who's like the master of of whatever whatever his job is, he, he deals with people all the time. So let's assume there's there's whatever mental state we have no clue, okay? And then the gods come in and they snap their fingers and say, "Hey, guy, let's look at your mind. Oh, look, you're you're a psychopath. You did this. You killed all these people to get your dream." If I acted under the assumption that Griffith never had any compassion, then I'd be really confused when I got to the scene of the idea of evil telling him that his compassion has just died from the effect of the transformation. How can he? lose something that he never had that doesn't really make any sense you, you are i think you're overblowing the humanity aspect of griffith i'm sure he's got human uh, capacities no, i'm sure no, he does no, but he acted Not on that empathetic guilt that. he acted on based on his no, humanity you can't you cannot base that on him cutting his arms I, I'm not. Because in that scene, he says, this is nothing. This does not mean anything to me. This kid didn't mean anything. I, I've gone through hundreds of soldiers. The very last thing he says is that is is acknowledging that he did care about Guts. The thematic climax of his arc is finally acknowledging and embodying his emotionality. What he says is out of all the thousands of comrades and tens of thousands of enemies, only one, you and you alone, you made me forget my dream. Now, you can interpret forget. that any way you like. You could interpret that to mean all kinds of things. Now, we know that from uh, his definition of a friend, that Guts was his friend. He put friend on a higher level than comrade. Because comrade was all of his soldiers, and they, they died off. Right? We don't know if he cared about them. We don't know if he made that up. We're not sure. It doesn't really matter. But Guts was his friend. He was the equal he was seeking for. And that was the whole speech at the top of the um, the fountain at, during the, was it the party? I can't remember whatever the scene it's was. The party. It was Charlotte. Yeah. And, and Guts and Casca are like, oh my God. And and I don't know if they actually heard, I assume he, they heard what he was saying because it looked very he, far he, away. He definitely, they definitely heard that speech. Yeah. But that's the, that's the, one of the biggest impacts that Guts got. And, uh, yeah. And he happened. goes, oh, that's what a friend is. I'm going to go do that. And he does that. And he goes and, and decides to find his own path and leave uh, Griffith. And even Griffith is like, even if that person is me, I, I would go against them. And it's, he's kind of getting what he, he wants in that regard. And it's kind of shocking, I think. That's it's like, give the, uh, give the character or give the protagonist what they want. You know, it's always one of those classic elements of the story to, they have, if they're scared of, of snakes, you know, the next scene, you better show some snakes or something like that. What's that got and to that do with a lack idea. of compassion? In regards to what? what we're talking about, whether Griffith lost his that, compassion in the transformation. Yeah, because you're you're making this assumption that he has compassion in this grandiose concept, and I never understood what that means. Well, it, Why do you think compassion, uh, like towards his men, he's never really known the thousands of men it would be impossible to know over the the course of how many battles and wars he'd fought to know all their dreams and feelings. I don't know if you've met. Too many military guys? I've met a few. Uh, they have a very tight group. I mean, the words of comrade means a little different to some of my Russian friends. That means a, above, like, stranger and friend and family. It's a very unique word. It's different with Griffith, though. Griffith says it's just the people I work with. Listen, we friend is above all of that. Listen, we've already been through this with the lake scene. He talked about hundreds and thousands of people dying for him and how bad he felt about that. And the way that it's framed is is that it is a moment uh, where Casca sees the truth, his true self before he, he slips back behind the mask. We know, it's not an assumption, yes. we know that that is what he feels. Just because you're not no, that no, empathetic. No, no, no. But, but why, if, why if he was just manipulating Casca into believing this? So like How Casca he... can sp spread this image. Uh, then why did he say, don't worry, it was nothing? Why did he try Because to... that's the truth. Because that's another not Well, mask. then he's not manipulating Casca. So, so you're he, saying that he's, he's, wait, he, is wait, at wait. Once, he is at once manipulating Casca into believing that he does care about his men, while also manipulating Casca yes, into believing that he doesn't... Yes, the sociopaths do that. They, they uh, pretend to be urged by something that like, oh, well, no, I, I can't overcome this, but like, maybe you, you can help me. You've just like, made two contradictory statements. They manipulate statements. people into believing those things. You've yeah. just made two contradictory statements. You said that at once he is um, trying to convince Casca that it was all for the money, all for the logic, but he is also trying to convince her that um, it's all about his men. If it, no, if it's he's hypothetically. To... Like, how, how do you know that like he's sincere in that moment? 
Th- there's no assurance in compared see, to like, all what, the other this scenes. This is a classic argument that the Greeks have always asked. How do you know when a liar is lying? Now, unless yes. you, you know some element of, okay, uh, I don't know, conversational ethics okay, where yeah. you can like look at a person's eyes and see their their uh, galvanetic skin response, you know, you, all these factors in, you, you might be able to figure out that way. But when you're talking about sociopaths, they are designed to manipulate and get something that they want. So what is the manipulation in that scene then, from your perspective? What is it? Well, he he was caught by Casca by sleeping with Genin, right? He got, he knows that. She knows that. Right. She comes by. What is the first thing you say? Oh, it feels so nice. Why don't you join me? Well, oh, you think I'm gross or or dirty or disgusting or whatever it was because he knows what she saw. So he's trying to go, okay, you know, let me play this up. How can I get her on my side? Because we know she likes him. So he's going to play, he's going to get some low hanging fruit. How do we get Casca to like him again or, or more? I'm going to play the victim. I'm going to feel and look so crazy. Who I want, again, this goes back to empathy or your idea of empathy. Who is so empathetic they hurt themselves? Is it someone who cares so much? No. It's someone who is super depressed and sad and wants to end it. If they're okay. going to dig their fingernails into their triceps and scratch, that is a lot of effort to do that. Right. Instead, he's putting on a show. He wants her comfort. He wants her to appeal to his emotions. Oh, she's going to like me more. Like so the, gonna... the other thing that like this supports, I'm sorry to interrupt someone, but because uh, right after that, like he barely cares about Casca. Like there's... <laughs> Uh, like a few moments, like the one when they uh, he sends reinforcements to save guts and her, but like the, these can be uh, interpreted as a strategic moment. Because well, no. if you lose guts and Casca, like the one of the two best soldiers he has in the army, and who, who's gonna command them? The rest, or do the killing? Like G- guts is definitely has like the highest kill count in that group, but th- even. Afterwards, like during like the fever dream he has before initiating the eclipse, like the only reason he has, uh, he's mentioning that like Casca is the only one that's taking care of him is that, like because like that was like initially like what he was envisioning that like yeah if I accept like this kind of life then I'm just a cripple, and Casca is just taking care of me that that's how he saw it. Yeah, this this is. We judge people not by what they say or how they talk. I mean, we could understand their character a bit. We judge them. We judge them by their actions. And True. That's again, my I want to stress this. Yeah, and I and I want to stress this. He is a classic narcissist. Okay. You, know, you don't have to read the, the DSM five to figure that out. We can get we can get, we can get into it. that because I actually wrote a whole section on that. But let's go based on what you have claimed that Griffith is manipulating Casca to try and uh, by by putting on this show of being vulnerable and sad to try and manipulate her for whatever reason. If that's the case, why for the, the first half of the scene does he outright deny that he feels anything? Why does he then, at the end of the, at the, end of the scene, try and tell her to forget about that? Why because in, uh, on, he's on, trying on, to on, feed on, her on. mind into like these ideas wow, that playing. like oh I'm troubled I I I am, can be endangered by these emotions that I have. Wow, real five D chess from Griffith. Why? Yes. If that's the case, if that if if Griffith's motivate if Griffith if Griffith's manipulation of Casca manifests him trying to get her to think that he is a vulnerable person, why in every other scene? In the seer in the in the golden age arc basically is he trying to claim the opposite to characters why in the dream speech is he trying to claim that he doesn't give a shit that's dull bullshit like he's just the the typical scumbag he is like he's just like trying to like like half truths is like he's uh, spreading like maybe some of those are his ideas but ultimately he just wants the pussy <laughs> he, he just wants charlotte because like that that's the way to the kingdom but it doesn't matter like what what he says there because like it's all just to manipulate this person into believing that. But that's like, kind of he, but that's kind of the only evidence. Expect that like guts will listen to that speech and like the have those things unfold. No, that that was probably just a mistake by him. So if, like, if uh, you know that if you know that he was bullshitting in that speech, then 
what evidence do you have to suggest that he only views his men as pawns? And isn't that compassionate? Because that's the main thing people latch on to. How can Griffith? How can Griffith's manipulation be um, trying to um, show his vulnerability, his vulnerable side? If at the start of his relationship with because guts, because that's he, what narcissists do. Okay, but then why at the start of his relationship with guts did he outright deny caring about guts or any of his men in any capacity at every single moment that is brought up? He saves guts. Well, why did he? Why did? Why did he let guts join his team? Because when they killed guts, killed one of his. His teammates, I think. Or three, his, three of them. Because, think, because really. Griffith liked Guts five, five, and because Guts treated Griffith as an equal and it was an escape from the heavy burden of having to be around people that basically viewed him as a messiah and uh, looked up to him. So he, he, sees, deeply so wanted he sees Guts as valuable. Yes, uh, as an equal friend. But what he claims is that no, he... No, not yet. Not yet. No, okay, that's let's, too let's early. Go, let's go to the start. Let's go to the start. In that, in that scene, he claims that Guts belongs to him. When Guts, when Griffith saves Guts at the rear guard, he saves G Guts is in a sticky situation. Griffith rides to the rear guard and saves Guts, almost dying in the process. Griffith tells Guts, um, the reason I did that was because um, you were a valuable soldier to me. You're a valuable, useful tool for me getting my own kingdom. That is what he wants Gus to think. He wants Gus to think that he doesn't care about him, that he only views him as a tool. But then three years later, when he, when, uh, he risks his life to save Zod again, uh, sorry, he risks his life uh, to save Gus from Zod, yeah. this time when Gus asks, he's entirely unwilling to say that. He says, Gus, do I even need a reason? Stop, stop, stop bothering me. He's unwilling to tell Guts the same thing that he did before because he genuinely cares about him, but he's still unwilling to acknowledge the fact that he cares. He's kind of in this middle space where he just he doesn't want to he doesn't want to acknowledge any feelings. Yeah, any it's, real it's like feelings. he doesn't care. Yeah, it's like he doesn't care. If he didn't care, why didn't he say the same thing he said a year ago? Because he still doesn't care. Like, what's I don't okay, see no, but why if he, he didn't if he didn't himself. care, that well then why is this yeah. parallel being brought up? In the first place, if he, well, why does he save Casca as well when she gets stuck? Because Casca and Guts are his two biggest pawns. The two right. Biggest here's the thing. To use. Here's the th here's the thing. If you're going to claim that uh, when he saves Guts and Casca, he is doing so uh, by calculating what was most valuable to his dream in that moment, surely the most valuable thing would be to preserve his own life. Why would he ever risk his life for a tool that is only useful to him if he is alive and able to use that tool to attain his kingdom? Casca the says because he's he's a, he's a master strategist and manipulator. Oh that's why. But like everyone, the strategy is playing into this. Everyone who comes across Griffith is either dead, is is entranced by him. He's always one step ahead of the, the aristocracy, as we saw with uh, with Julius. Uh, you know, it's the only that one time when he gets a friend and he loses it that he he his his scheming f is not quite clear. He shows up at Charlotte's windowsill. Yep, yep. And he's like, "Okay, hey, how's it going?" Blah blah blah. And oh yeah, you're right. I probably shouldn't be here. And he just starts grabbing, and you're like, "Oh, this is not going to end well." Because he knows it's not going to end well. She knows it's not going to end well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, period. Yes. Yeah. Casca says. Casca says this herself. She says that Griffith is unusually is usually calm and calculated, except with Guts. She says that Guts changed him. And she said that it was really odd that Griffith was risk his life in that way. Griffith doesn't objectively value Guts' use to the Hawks as a tool, because Griffith has an incredibly off-base understanding of Guts' actual strategic value. Excuse me. Um, so... He, he lets Guts on the front lines while knowing that he's a reckless hothead that almost gets himself and the Raiders killed all of the time. And he sent fucking Guts on a stealth mission to assassinate Julius. And we all know how that one panned out. Griffith is it emotions works. first when it comes to Guts. Successful. He is biased towards him and it clouds his strategic judgment. This isn't Wait the case second. anywhere if biased, else. And he, if he's biased, why do you put him on the front lines? No, no, the point is, what do you mean? 
Yes, he's biased towards him emotionally. He likes him. Well, then why did you put him on the front lines? There's no way he could die. What? Because he because he has a biased? bloated sense. He has he has this bloated confidence in Guts' ability to to survive survive and do stuff well. That's why he sent him on that okay. stealth mission. Yeah. So he so knows the point what of this, Guts can do. The point of this, no, no, he clearly doesn't. Because why would you send Guts on a stealth mission? The most clumsy, the, the least stealthy person in his entire army. Because that, Guts will do it, and he's going to do it well. All of his soldiers. Would you think Judah would have refused to do that? That's. I. I don't think that's relevant. Whether who he chose, he chose the best guy. No, but he best. didn't choose the the best guy. The best guy would have been Judo. He's the stealth guy. The whole point of that scene is is to show that. Um, he's stupid. Guts, no. The, yes. Well. Ba yeah. Well. Basically. Well. Yes. To say that he doesn't objectively uh, value guts on his based on his strategic value alone. In fact, I you, think he he in, puts guts above everyone else. Do you know I what? Really do, do. Do, do, do you know what? proves completely that, that you're wrong in this point and how you've okay. contradicted yourself. Why? The very sure. last thing Guts says, uh, Griffith says, is that Guts is the only one who made him forget his dream. So how can so he what? be valuing Guts um, on his use as a tool if Guts is be, making him there forget could be his numerous dream? numerous reasons why he forgot a dream. He said he's never had a friend before, and that's his only friend. If you have a thing you've never had before, you might forget other things. Okay. You might have other priorities that get contradicted or pushed aside. That's totally normal. So I don't see how that contradicts the definition of a friend and his value of guts as numero uno in his army. Okay, so 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 that proves that in certain instances when he's trying when he's talking about um, guts and his relationship and his feelings towards guts. When he claims that he only views him as a pawn, he is lying to himself. There is there is there so is he, no so truth he, to that. He is so he's he is a pawn or not a pawn? Which one is it? He's not a pawn. He convinces himself that he's a pawn, but his actions Yeah, he is a pawn originally. His actions and then he becomes his friend. Right? And no, no, see, no, 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 no. Because yeah. because again, why would Griffith um risk his life? For a guy who'd only been in the band for a couple of days, if he was because just a pawn, he's a really good fighter. No, that's that point, ridiculous. Really because fighter. because um, it's not Ka ridiculous. Casca really monologues. Casca has a monologue uh, saying, "This is really weird. Why is Griffith acting that way? Griffith has never acted this yeah. way to anyone. She's yeah, it spiteful." Seems like he really, yeah, because it seems like Griffith knows the the battle capabilities of of guts. But but we've we've clearly established that he doesn't. Uh. Well, why else is he going after him? Where, where did we establish that? Well, he's going after him because he likes him beyond his strategic value to the Hawks. He literally risks his entire life, his kingdom, his dream for this guy that yes. he only met a couple of days yes, ago. When you, that is not strategic when you have, objective When you have value. goals like that, you're going to risk your life. You're going to put your life but on not the for line. Such yes. a mind, yeah, well, but not for such a stranger. Not for someone no, so no, unimportant. He's, he's, he's not a stranger. Best. Like he, ju he just saw him single-handedly kill that armored guy that was like three times his size with just like a long ass sword he cut up that like i'm gonna send like some of my elite men after you just just for fun like yeah, caucus was regards, probably doing that yeah in regards to sending him on missions he sent them on three missions in terms of assassination and they were all successful so clearly he's good at his job G guts and was good at, i don't see anything guts, wrong with guts was with, good at his job when he did the julius mission that's what you're Yes, claiming? he was more than successful. He, when he, he killed Adonis, when he killed Julius' yes. son by accident. So that, that was like another thing that was in front why is of Griffith. That, when, that, that's yeah, why he, had, he was having that psychopathic uh, when, smile on his when, face. When Guts uh, got injured by accident and then he had to cover his wounds and then um, Guts Foss gets injured by he gets all injured. kinds of things. He, no, 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 no. He wasn't stealthy. He set off the alarm and then he got an arrow stuck in his shoulder and when Foss saw that, it made him... Um, think oh he must have been the guy who assassinated uh tri assassinated julius guts is a really bad guy at stealth he's really bad and he killed a child where, where do you get that not scene where that was job. that in the manga uh i don't remember the specific chapter but i know it happened it, it, i i don't remember that part when uh, Foss uh, saw that yeah did he i i well maybe it happened i don't recall that but uh either way he trusts guts to do the job 
because, guts does because the job earlier on you and he literally does the job earlier on you literally well. admitted that guts was the only one who he didn't view as a tool you said that and now you're saying the opposite later, because later it doesn't on, align he sees with him your as view. a friend initially he's the best soldier he's got okay it's very simple no he gets this guy who's killed some of his men hey dude i got a dream follow me blah, blah, blah. let's have a fight he beats guts okay now you're mine and now he's his best unit to the point of nope. him being promoted to captain or no because easy, yeah. because even three years later after you after he fights with zod and they're friends and he values him even then he's unwilling to tell guts that he cares about him even then i'm not seeing a, even I'm at not that seeing point with that so what exactly so 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 the point is um griffith isn't willing to show his emotional side he is repressing so his emotions so what no he's we're, not we're initially you're 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 you're, you're basing it off a, of a, a lack of evidence on a negative because he's not showing emotion he must have emotion no but, but, but we, we've, we've just had an but you've, you but you know you just said yourself that griffith does truly care about guts but he's not admitting it as a friend yes yes as, as a friend, a friend sure. but he's not admitting that that doesn't mean he, that doesn't mean he has to admit it why I didn't say he had to. I'm saying that it's evidence What's the that problem? I'm saying that it's evidence that he does not acknowledge his emotions normally to other people. So when it does happen with Casca, oh, it's a okay. freak accident. So we're just going like a, in circles with this. Yeah, he's, yeah, he sounds like a narcissist. He's a, he doesn't admit. To how does that make him a narcissist? Or this or that? How does the, how? Uh, Emotional well, repression is not narcissism. What what are you talking about? Uh, not having the emotion in the first place is narcissism. Well, we've we've just we've just. Um, We've just agreed that he does feel those emotions to grip to guts. As he a has a friend is not an emotion. Yes, it is, and he doesn't. He doesn't. No, it's not. It. It's a relationship. It's not an emotion. I could have a, a relationship with all different kinds of people and feel zip. Okay, if you've acknowledged that Griffith viewed guts as a friend at that point in the manga, why did Griffith say the opposite in his dream speech to Charlotte if it wasn't a lie? What did he say? He says a true friend um, must be someone who has his own reason for living beyond uh, beyond victory. He must have his own dream, and because guts doesn't have that, he can't be my friend. That's what he says. There you but go. Clearly, there. He, so guts doesn't know yet what that means. No, 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 no. We're talking so why, about we're talking about Griffith. Why? Did, yeah, and guts has was no Griffith, idea what Griffith was, means as a friend. Okay, was Griffith why telling Griffith the truth? Say, hey, there? guts, you're my buddy. Why? Why would Griffith say that? Because because it was prompted by Guts asking why he saved him. In that in that yeah. scenario, you usually say, "Well, because I, I I care about you, Guts, because I because I value you as a person." Or that's what, that's what I normal you because people because you're do. my soldier. But he was unwilling to say that. But he was unwilling to Who say cares? that like he did before. So what? No. But you have to ask why did he? Why was he unwilling to say that this time around? Yes, Remember, but you're there's making a the assumption he's got emotion to do so, or he he needs to do that. There's no reason to do it. Why would he do that? Because he was just, just asked because the someone question. asked him a question. Yes. Who cares? Who cares? Because it's part of the hey. story. Hey, Griffith, it's a what's scene two plus that you're in. I don't care. Because it's a scene. Guts, that you're Mira my included. favorite frying pan. If it was a scene, if it was a scene in and of itself, your argument might make sense. But there has been a clear, intentional line, a comparison, a parallel to the first time he saved uh, Guts, where he said, "You're a soldier to me." Mira is saying that three years later, Griffith no longer believes that, and he's no longer willing to say that. That's or, what he's saying. Or Griffith doesn't like repeating himself, like he did when he went to have his what last three years with before. Him. So so after sure so why <laughs> why would Griffith write it into the story if the only thing he was saying in that scene was Griffith didn't want to repeat himself? What kind of thematic uh, character writing is that? <laughs> What's the point? It doesn't need to be thematic. It doesn't need to be. And why was it in the scene? Because why it, was it in the story? He was about to leave the band of the hawk, and Griffith stops him, and he says, "You are mine. Your life is mine. If you want to leave, you have to." Speak to my sword or words to that effect, right? Yes, because, because again, as I, down, as I explained in my previous video, he momentarily readopts his persona as a defense mechanism. He goes back into that state of emotional That's repression. That's not a persona. That's just a statement of fact. He's just saying, if you got to leave, this is how you do it. No, but we know that Griffith doesn't merely... Wait, what are you talking about? You're talking about his the way that Guts, the is, the guts left? 
yeah, he's a he's he's, he's gonna leave, he's gonna walk out the door and everyone's waiting for him right at the edge of wherever they are, and Griffith is there, and he's like, hey, you're not gonna let me go or whatever, and Griffith's like, yeah, you're mine, you belong to me. If you want to leave, you have to do this. Yes, and, and they, they fight. And, and here's boom, and here's the leaves. thing: after guts, after Griffith saves guts from Zod, Griffith doesn't want to say anymore that guts belongs to him and he's a mere soldier at, but then he repeats at the point in time when they have the duel that's when griffith goes oh this is my friend he is doing his thing that i remember the speech at the, the fountain with uh, charlotte he now maybe he's realizing that's his friend at that point no Either no that, no no, no, hits no, no, him no for reality no, no why not well it hits him that's, that's... and then he has th th why does he have such a jerk reaction when he he doesn't realize it's his friend because his entire the first inner monologue we we see him having is this cope that he merely belongs no, 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 to no, no, me no. you're assuming tool. his mental state again we don't we don't do I'm this not it's literally things. an inner monologue you're no, assuming it you just, you just made the is... assumption you just said you just stated that in that moment, Griffith saw Guts as a friend. I'm saying no, he yeah. didn't, because in the inter the first ever internal monologue we ever hear him say in that scene, Griffith is not acknowledging his, him as a friend. He's he's saying he belongs to me. He's a tool. He will never get out of yes, my reach. Yes, he's possessive. He's an object, exactly. And then, and then the reality hits when he finally beats Griffith. He's actually... I don't know if you want to call that an equal or whatever. He's he's just better at at the the duel. No, because and, but like like how because, how can you say if he won't be mine, his life is forfeit? That so be it. I don't care. That that that's well, literally that's, what he says in the yes, manga. I know it's what it's yeah, what he says, but it, it it doesn't fall in line with his characterization uh, since the what? three year time that, skip. That, that's what he thinks. Yes, that may be what he consciously thinks. That may be his cope. <sighs> But he then wait, realizes wait, wait, wait. Stop, later. Stop, 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 stop. Don't say consciously think. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, sure. <laughs> Obviously, if you're thinking, it's conscious, right? It, it, saying... it wasn't consciously informed well, about it. It's uh, yeah, in, in the not, monologue. Let's not, well, let's not delve into the unconscious oh, mind, God. please. <laughs> <clears throat> he consciously thought. Unconsciously. Guts really wants apples, but instead he got swords. Oh, okay. <laughs> Clang. Griffith admits to himself in the dungeon that he did actually um, acknowledge that Guts was a true friend. And he regretted how he treated Guts in the second duel. And he admits that that was wrong. Did, did he? After... All, all, I could, I could, all I could read in that chapter is that like he is the only thing that keeps him alive. Because like he, he, there's no other enemy that like keeps him like that. There's like, a specific yeah, phrase. he is he is conflicted, but like he's not saying that like he's a friend or anything. No, he's saying he's that more he's, like he's, the, he's saying that he, the guts is the one person who makes him lose his composure and um, is the one person that makes him forget his dream. So um, it says that he expressed he, that he feels regret. You see, he, the he's reason, not expressing the regret. reason that Griffith goes to Charlotte was it was a way for him to continue the path to his dream but really but quickly and desperately to convince himself <clears throat> that um, he know that he doesn't need guts but as he's having sex with Charlotte guts keeps playing in his mind and he's trying to distract himself he's trying to distract himself from and then the about first guts. reaction that guts. Griffith has is just choking, uh, trying no, to choke okay, Guts. Okay, but, but don't he change the have subject. The, the point is that Griffith did not acknowledge that Guts was a true friend in the second duel. It was only afterwards he realized his mistake. He realized that he was lying to himself in the second duel. Okay, so you're saying for whatever reason, only till after the second duel he realizes he's a friend. Yes. Because because look, okay, like, so he sees the situation he's in. He's like, the, shit. The this second is my duel fault. is when his uh, sword breaks into right. Yeah, yeah. That, I I think we can all agree that's the reality of oh he is my friend because that's based on his criteria what a friend is. That's totally fine. No, Even if he, he was thinking he was before, it doesn't really matter. That's the reality <laughs> of what he defined. Right. Okay, but right? he didn't internally okay, realize that until his epiphany just before he did the sacrifice. He didn't realize that internally. Wait a second. Wait a so what? Why does that matter though? Because we're talking about how Griffith viewed, we're talking about whether Griffith is lying in certain scenes, and that requires an understanding of his internal perception so, of guts. So you admit he's not a friend till the eclipse. He's a friend. He just doesn't realize it. He doesn't admit it to himself. 
Okay, that's fair. Yeah. I guess. It all makes sense. Well, I, I just don't think what he's thinking is really relevant to why the narrative is the way it is. It is because and in order to um in order to um understand whether a character is lying, we need to know their true internal motivations. And my uh, my premise that he feels empathy is predicated on the fact that he lies in certain scenes. So of course his internal motivation matters. Because that's what we're okay, talking about. We can we can just characterize this as an usurper of a power hungry fellow who's had gone through a lot of people and some of those people he regards as more valuable than others. He cares about them more in some capacity. I don't care what emotion that is. Call it empathy, call it camaraderie, it doesn't really matter. And in certain cases, he shows those emotions in negative ways. Mm -hmm. And he does not have to deal with that. That is what we would call, in certain states, instances, not every example, of course, of, of Griffith is negative, but the narcissistic behavior of not getting what you want. It's called a narcissistic rage, I think. I, can't, I, think that's a, I don't know if that's the medical term. I know it sounds a little silly. But it's when the narcissist does not get what they want. And okay, they I... try to compensate and they try to behave a certain way. I'm not saying this is example but it's it's a way of categorizing his behavior okay I've, 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 once you wrap it around that it's like oh this makes everything that griffith has done within that label it goes oh, okay this this makes more sense okay why he is the way he is and why people like him and how he's so good with people and i, I think it uh, if you want to play into the whole concept of the murderous fantasy world that they're in where everyone's a, a certain shade of black then it's sort of like, okay, Griffith knows how to ride that that hierarchy. So he knows how to get up there. Okay, I've actually written a, quite a lengthy couple of paragraphs um, exploring whether or not Griffith is a narcissist. So I'd like to be able to read it all out and then for you to respond well, afterwards, okay? Is how long right? is it exactly? Um, it's, like three, it's like three paragraphs. It's not that long. Just let, Okay, just let me all right, that's fair. Go for all it. Right. So in the first 10 minutes of your video, you said that... Um, Griffith is less moral than Guts due to his narcissism. He used that as evidence that he was less moral. Um, so I looked up what are the common traits of a narcissist. And the first one is a grandiose sense of importance. And it's delusional. Would you agree with that? He has a grandiose sense of importance, yes. Is, is it deluded? It has to be deluded. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Because if it's not deluded, then he's just he just understands reality. A grandiose self, sense of self-importance well, is, if, I think, I'm amazing. Well, if a carrot, if a person is genuinely important in a certain context, and they're just being like, this is what I've said, that he does kind of have a grandiose sense of importance, but it's not inherent to his character. It's not an innate biological personality disorder, and it's not delusional. It, wait, he wait, was wait, important. We're talking about. And we're talking about NPD is a, well, is a specific Yeah, sure, or just narcissism that, in general. Whether it's inherent to his character or whether he just comes off narcissistic because um, okay, he projects that's fair. this right. persona, uh, this false fair, persona. Sure. Yeah. So he was important. Thousands of people's lives and dreams rested on his shoulders. He knew that responsibility. He was also treated as a messiah figure for his entire teenage life. He didn't manipulate or groom people into worshiping into worshiping him at three years old. That's how they always regarded him. They gave him importance. It wasn't self-assigned. Griffith simply understands exactly how important he truly is to his men, going by how they treated him. And he didn't like that, by the way. He found the burden to be incredibly heavy, and the main reason he was so fond of Guts was because he was an escape from all that. Guts always treated Griffith like an equal, and so Griffith felt like Guts was the only person he could be himself around. Certainly not with Judo, Casca, or Corcus, who all looked up to him and had an inferiority complex of some form towards him. It made Griffith lonely. He also didn't feel self-importance at the expense of others. He valued Guts as a soldier and a friend to such an extent that he put his life on the line for him on multiple occasions. If anything, okay, so you're saying he does have a, a sense of self-importance. But it's but it's completely valid and accurate. It's not overblown. It, it's it's it, exactly it's the same thing. how it. You, well, you're not a narcissist you for understanding your importance if you're the president of the United States. 
Do you know what I mean? That's you are important. You understand. Well, that. actually, people who are in those positions are very egotistical. So, uh, it, whether it's grandiose, whether it's imagined, the the persona is pretty much the same. Yeah, you know, his it's, persona, it's but happen. not his true internal self. It doesn't matter. We're talking about. It doesn't matter because we're talking about internal motivations. I don't care about your weird definition of internal sense of self. I don't even know what okay, that means. Well, we're you talking have his about the character okay. of Griffith. Right. right. Okay? We have his Good. external actions. He did bad things. We've gone over that. But in the first 10 minutes of your video, you used his narcissism as a reason why Griffith is bad and unlikable. That's an internal thing, right? It's not just action. It's how he perceives himself and the world around him. Right? When you're talking about doing actions, people will see that as good or bad. And everyone is bad in Berserk. The difference is, I guess, Griffith is just very more efficient at being bad. Right. Um, I'll, I'm just, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just go over another aspect of narcissism. Um, another aspect is a sense of entitlement. And this is kind of true in the sense that he believed he was fated to be successful. But an important part of this is expecting Kit to get whatever they want when they want it. Griffith doesn't feel entitled to use his men's lives and deaths to achieve his dream. He doesn't believe that he can do that while staying unclean. He believes that he has a duty to his men to look after them and see their dreams through to fruition. And he goes so far as to whore himself out to save their lives. Another um, important aspect is that he ex is that narcissists exploit others without guilt or shame. And this is absolutely not true. I referred to my previous argument. He just, just before that, because like uh, th th that seems like a long one. Okay, uh, sorry. He in, the, in not no problem. In the manga, like he clearly says, like it's for the budget because like if he keeps losing uh, his man, like he was like uh, really young at that time, wasn't he? Like he was like thirteen or fourteen when yeah. the lake scene happened. Okay, so if you lose manpower that fast and like you can't provide equipment for your man like you just fought so like he saw the rape up not, not rape but like the sex with the uh, ganon as an opportunity to get money without sacrificing his man <laughs> that early uh, so he can continue his war efforts okay but that was specifically after he felt such overwhelming guilt towards the dead child soldier Mir wouldn't have included uh, that scene if it was he... merely due to money it was due to guilt. It's not just it's it's not just the emotions, but like the strategic uh, aspects of just like okay, but going the, okay, but the and like burning through all your men. But that strategy was built on the foundation of his love for his men. He says, "Well, I need money so that less men die in the battlefield because I don't want them to die needlessly. I care about their dreams. I care about that boy soldier. That's his underlying foundational motivation." Does well, he says he sense? doesn't care about them. Well, that well, that's the moment where uh, that persona. Well, he thinks he cares about slips. them with his fucked up sense of justice. Well, no, he thinks the opposite most of the time, as we've gone over about fifty different times already. <laughs> um, but anyway, he does not exploit others without guilt or shame. Or shame, and here's another interesting, important point: he wouldn't order guts to assassinate Julius for him. He specifically requested for guts to do that. Which Gus was surprised by. He was like, why didn't you order just order me to uh, assassinate Julius? That's pretty weird. It's because Griffith cares about Guts's consent. Because he doesn't view Guts as a mere tool. Um, he even consoled in Guts when he felt guilty over the hired thugs he killed in the aftermath of the Queen's death. And he asked whether Guts thought he was cruel. Guts responded by saying it was fine to kill anyone because that's the path to his dream. Griffith is filled with more guilt and remorse towards the people he killed than anyone else in the Hawks, most, uh, more, especially Guts. Guts feels no remorse. Why are remorse. you assuming it's guilt? Why are you assuming that's guilt? Because he did the same speech with Casca. Um, yeah. Why do you think I'm dirty? Or why do you think you're doing this dirty business? I'm sorry about that. Like, why do you, why do you call that guilt? Because it's uh, contextualized by uh, the dream, the uh, lake scene with Casca. No, no, no. I mean, the scene with with Griffith after he kills the, uh, the abductors of uh, uh, what's his name's daughter. Because we know from uh, the from the lake scene that when he no, that no, no, when no. people die Griffith. for him in general, when people die for him, he feels bad about that. That's a real emotion he feels. 
Because because earlier on we had this discussion, you said that that's not an emotion per se. He just says I involved you in this filthy scheme, and I didn't even get my he hands. Says, Do you think I'm cruel? And he has a really sad expression. Then Gus says it's okay, and Griffith looks relieved. He's like, oh, okay. Then Gus says it's all right. I feel okay. So it's clearly an emotional. So you're you're thing. assuming his facial expression is emotional because he can move his lips. <laughs> you draw me to send you the um the image on. I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at it right you're now. You're looking at the image of of God's. Of I Griffith involved acting. you in this filthy scheme, and I didn't even get my hands dirty. Do you think that I'm cruel? Are you looking at his um facial expression? You're saying because he's looking at with, with the pursed lips, and I guess his eyes are slightly. Okay. Well, I don't know. Then look at how to describe his eyes. Look at look at Guts's response, and then look at how uh, Guts Griffith lowers his head and smiles, and then and? they walk off into the distance. Well, because Guts reassures Griffith, and then he smiles when he wasn't before. It's an emotional thing. People express them. People have facial expressions when they feel things. What is this argument? I don't understand. This yeah, guts, so guts does because Griffith is a narcissist. He can make shit up. He doesn't have to have this conversation. But that's not based on anything. You're not basing that on anything. Yes, it is. How do he you know he's a narcissist? He is killing everyone we, for his goals. But again, we know that he... He, yeah, but I just I went. I just went through says. an aspect of narcissism was that he exploits other people without yes, guilt or and shame. You're trying to without it guilt to or shame. Something else. We know that there he feels guilt or shame, terms which means narcissism. He doesn't. You need five of the nine, and you're cherry picking whatever you want. Go through all nine next time, and don't try to favor one or the other. Do not try to infer an emotional state or try to guess. Oh, he's sad because his face looks like this way. Because I involved you in this filthy scheme. I just gave I you the context of other scenes to inform this analysis. You're going off nothing. You are describing you're going off what ifs. No, you, you're you don't. No, you don't even I'm remember. I'm going off what ifs. You don't even I'm looking remember. looking at the scene right now. You I'm reading the scene right now. You don't now. even remember half of the chapters of what, or what the fuck happens in the story. You're not prepared for this. I don't. You have to, to know. have. You have to Excuse have it explained me, to the other guy. Excuse me. I'm reading this comic manga right now. Well, the audience can, is it on the screen on the live stream? Would you like me to put it on the screen? Well, is it well? You can put it on the screen, and the audience can decide for themselves. Because I'm sure that they'll agree the with me. Uh, okay. There it is. That's a link in the description. Let me see if I can get my video. Okay, I'm just waiting for the page to load. Listen, we know that he feels guilty towards people when they die and it's his fault. So why is it ridiculous for me to then apply that you're, to another scene where he again says that he feels guilty and he has that experience? You're off completely words. basing all of this I'm basing on this it off one, other scenes. Cannon. You're basing it off nothing. You're basing Excuse it off me, what nothing. do you mean I'm basing <laughs> it off nothing? What, do you, what am I basing well, it off? Well, you're just being contrarian to everything I say. I say... I, I say that um, this is the reason why he does something. And you say, how do you know that? What if it's this? You just give the opposite without actually ever bringing you any are alternative evidence to the table. You are assuming a mental state or an emotional state based off a facial expression by a master manipulator. No, who because I just... I all just is meant to die for him. No, I'm pretty sure I just referenced yes. the lake scene. I didn't just I didn't all... just appeal to his facial expression. I talked about the lake scene with Casca where he's yes, been shown to where he's also manipulating his behavior for Casca. But I just went through why he wasn't and you had no answer to that. I said he's a narcissist. He's self-inflicting himself based off who knows what? I don't know what's going through his no, mind. You said, he was, you said he was lying about guilt to manipulate Casca. But then we just went through the, the whole thing about, for the entire arc, he was <laughs> telling everyone the exact opposite. So when he uh, shows so it's okay when he guilt, lies for your explanation, but it's not okay when he lies for my explanation. Is that how that goes? Well, I've given explanations. You haven't. That's, that's, the, that's the bottom line. I'm not assuming an extra step here. I'm not assuming he has some certain mental state or emotion or he's got all these 
I don't know, feelings for people. We have no idea who they are, what their dreams are. And that has caused him to, to dig into his triceps and biceps so violently because that's what normal people do when they have so much positive emotion flowing through their body. I'm not taking any extra step. When Griffith says, I yes. feel awful about the men that died for me, and then I take that at face value, that's me just reading the words on the page. You have to then yeah. bring the evidence to the table to suggest that what he's saying right there isn't the truth. You haven't done that. You can't do that because you're wrong. How am I wrong? For all the reasons I've been outlining for the past however long this stream's been going on for. When he says in that conversation, no, I don't. I came to this conclusion rationally, which brings less risk, losing hundreds of soldiers in 10 battles or snaring a rich old man. How is that wrong? What does he say in the very next couple of pages? How does he contradict that? He says, but I, I feel all this horrible guilt towards the men that died for me. The reason that... I... But if there is something that I can do for them, something I can do for the dead, then it is to win. I must keep winning to attain my dream, the same one they clung to and risked their lives for. Oh, no, he's justifying what he's always wanted by saying, hey, all those guys died for a reason. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, get all my men killed for my dream. No, because the whole point of that scene is that he's seeking to minimize their deaths by throwing himself out again so that he doesn't have to fight so many battles. So no, he's just rationalizing it for himself no, he's, with no, his he's fucked not up logic. He, no, he can't be rationalizing it to continue because his yes, actions... He can. No, no, but he hasn't he done that. He absolutely does. He hasn't done that because the whole point is he hurt them, himself out to minimize their deaths by minimizing the number of battles he fights. He's not willing to needlessly kill his soldiers. He doesn't feel entitled to their lives. That's the point. Can this can this play into him being another strategy uh, move? How how saving? how much longer is this going to go on for? Because I feel like we're at an impasse, kind of. Well, the thing is that when you read characters in a certain way, you do not assume that they've got this emotional state or this mental state or whatever is inside. We can't really know for sure unless the story actively tells us. Where in one example, with the the gods come down and and go ba boom this, this is your mental state right that's that's a good i mean that's not the best way of doing it in a story but that's all we got when uh, we can see into the mind or we have like i don't know like a telepath like in fantasy or science fiction we do have that what's actually going on. we have that we have right we have the idea of evil telling griffith what his internal uh, emotional state is and we have griffith himself in an internal monologue at the end saying that he did truly care about guts so all the times he said that he didn't that wasn't actually true that's how we know. An internal monologue, that's not up for interpretation. That's what he internally Well, I, I would agree he cares about guts, but not... In I mean, what way he cares about guts? That's the yeah, question. Yeah, I'm, not, well, we I'm just, not saying he doesn't well, care we, about we've already, men. We've already been through uh, the fact that he viewed guts beyond his uh, use to him as a mere tool. That's the whole point. He made him forget he, th his There's dream. no indication that he felt gay love for guts. I didn't say that. He, you said that in the video. I, no, <laughs> that was another. Meme. Yes, I you just, said that. Yeah, no, I know I said that, but it was a funny meme take. <laughs> I, it was, I was, oh, I was intentionally uh, uh, being provocative. Okay. Um, I was actually going to go through um, your dislike of my use of the word toxic masculinity in the video, and I was about, I was going to go over well, that's, how um, I, a lot you of. You know what? A lot of. Once we get to a certain point, there's a lot of stuff I just sort of gloss over. Like this is not worth even discussing this yeah but I, I was actually gonna go i was gonna say that in stories that explore more traditional uh modes of masculinity um you often get uh characters who are able to express their emotions openly to each other and in this modern uh in this modern toxic masculinity that we have ourselves in in urban industrialized societies when we read these okay. stories a lot of people assume that these male characters who care about each other and who have intimate relationships or, uh, are gay, like Griffith and Guts, like Sam and Frodo from Lord of the Rings. They, they assume that these people are gay because they, um, they're open to each other emotionally, but they're not. They're just really good friends in a non-toxic way, in a non-toxic masculine way. Hmm. So that... that that was an interesting thing I was going to go over because the the um, 
the, the term toxic masculinity was, wasn't actually coined by feminists. It was coined by the mythopoetic men's movement, um, which was like a self-help um, organization for men from the 80s to the 90s. And they... Uh, they didn't like feminism. They actually used Jungian archetypes and Jungian texts to uh, create this archetypal idea of deep masculinity um, from tribal societies and stuff like that. And he said they said that the modern um, type of masculinity, um, emotional repression, self-reliance and competitiveness, isn't actually the original masculinity. It's a result of... Um, individualist modern capitalism and that such and, and all that right i mean yeah the the etymology of that begins in the 80s but it's used differently nowadays and it's just yeah but yeah but it's the not point was worth in, getting into in the original video you said um how can berserk be about toxic masculinity that didn't exist in the 80s and if it did it was on sjw college campuses i'm saying that toxic masculinity absolutely applies to the Jungian themes of berserk because that's where th the term originated and it doesn't have to be exploring feminist messaging for it to be about toxic masculinity because a lot of people who believe in the older archetypal um, ideas surrounding masculinity, they also reject the more modern toxic masculinity. So it doesn't even have to be feminist for Berserk to be exploring these ideas of emotional repression in men. Yeah, but we're, we're talking in a very specific way way and it's not really inducive of understanding a narrative this is like using a lens on one scene or two scenes to analyze a relationship or something that i don't know maybe a sociology course might look at i mean i've talked about really a helpful. lot of a lot of a lot of scenes that um involving griffith repressing his emotionality i mean that's that's the main parallel between guts and griffith throughout the story griffith uh, guts uh, overcomes that and and he um, you're you're just describing a the personality power of friendship. And how, yeah, but I know we're just discussing a personality that has a certain attitude. I mean, it doesn't really change much. Yeah, but the lens, lens you've got the lens that that um, the toxic mask the people who coined the term toxic masculinity the lens they were looking at th at it through was um, Jungian psychology, and that is a, a lot of what Berserk is about. Okay, so it's totally valid to view it again, through that lens because that's all of Berserk. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you're saying I could use a diff I could use a social political lens. I could use a feminist lens. I could use a capitalist lens. Like it's it's not really part of the narrative. It's not helping me understand the narrative. It's just I can I can hyper focus on this one oh, thing. But I thought I thought lens. you you knew all about how um, uh, Berserk talks about the shadow and all of that and how that's a central theme of Berserk. That's you a can, that's a thing you that you at, use. You 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 view that, it through a Jungian yeah, lens sometimes. I, I, I'm appealing I don't, to your I don't sensibilities. Need to use that to understand the concept of berserk. If I were to look at berserk as a narrative that is that requires a certain lens or something like that, I would look at the concept of fate as a theme, as uh, you know, good versus evil, or or evil over or lesser evils or greater evils. Like there's there's some themes you could work with. I don't think toxic masculinity is a very effective one, even if it is young. That's that's sort of okay. neither here nor there. Forget the term toxic masculinity. Just think emotional repression. We've just had an hours-long conversation about how Berserk explores emotional repression. That should be enough, don't you think? No, it's not useful. Uh, if we look at a personality in a, in, a, in a story or whatever, and you're saying, well, they're not expressing themselves. It's like, great. Do we need to know all the thoughts that Batman is having to enjoy the film? Like, what is really going through Bruce's mind? Like, I don't need to know that. It's not useful to the scene. It's not useful to the plot. It's not useful to characterizing the problems of the story. But it is, but it is, when, the it is when Griffith's emotional repression is a driving force beside, behind a lot of his actions. Why he freaks out when Guts leaves. Um, how he responds to the death of children that die for him. The reason yeah, why he sacrifices his soldiers into the eclipse. Well, I've made my arguments now. There's nothing I, know, I left for you're me still, to say. You're still focusing on the internal where there is no clear evidence. You're just trying to say, okay, well, he says this, therefore okay, you, that. You seem, another scene where he says there's nothing else where it could mean something different. I don't understand like, what you want. Do you want the author to come out and say Griffith is about emotional repression? 
He did that. Do, does it need to be explicitly stated in the in the narrative? That's what a lot of if that's what stories. When you are using is. terms like that, when you are using like psych terms or sociological terms, then you're you're in your own world. You're not in the world of the narrative. You're trying to pull that world into the narrative. Okay, this is this is another it. thing. Yeah, this is another thing that I wanted to cover. The fact that toxic masculinity wasn't a term in the '80s, so it can't be applied to berserk. But here's the thing: just because I use that term just because the term didn't exist doesn't mean that um the general idea of emotional repression was completely foreign to, J to japan in the 1980s of course people in japan knew that men sometimes unhealthily repress their emotions and that's a thing that can be explored me using the term toxic masculinity it, it's it's a semantic argument pretend i didn't say that pretend i just said well that's what it's i mean a commentary it's, it's on kind of it's kind of I'm pointless because sure. you're going to use another word to explain the internal world that we have no access to. We do have access to it. He has internal monologues making, and literal gods talk about it. You're it's making, not an well, assumption. It's evidence-based. It's evidence-based. When, when you have a god moment like the illusion, which is not the best form of god moments because it is effectively an illusion. It's not crystal clear. Yes, you could make that argument. Like, okay, this is what's actually in his mind. This is what the telepath is saying. You can read his brain with his computer, blah, blah, blah. That's great. I'm not denying that. It's still interpretive because it is still a dream illusion thing. But we have to take what the uh, the gods say as as facts because they're gods. Now, the argument is, well, they can be manipulating. They, we know they're manipulating Griffith. So what is true and what is false? That's the problem. It still comes down to we still don't know exactly okay. what the problem is. Okay. So, I am sure that in certain stories where it isn't explicitly stated what a character's internal psychology is, I'm sure you still have beliefs about what that character feels internally, even if it's not explicitly stated. Even if there's no 100% truth, um, you still believe that. And I believe that you can still be swayed by different pieces of evidence, even if there's no 100% truth. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I yeah, can but... guarantee you that just because um, there's no 100% truth that Batman thinks this internal thing, I'm sure that you don't use that as a reason to, like, not believe that in certain instances. You have your I, own I can inferences. Many... Well, we're talking yeah, about I, I belief here. It's not effective. No one can prove it, but I've given the um, uh, most substantive evidence in this conversation. You've just said, what if? Sorry, what have I what have I claimed? You haven't. Well, you you've claimed the opposite of everything I'm saying by appealing to the fact that I can't know, rather than actually um, uh, uh, undermining or con trying to contradict what my actual arguments and my actual. Textual well, we evidence. tend to look at the actions of a character to determine their character, we, what they what they actually want, what they they do for it. I've done. Everyone that. knows Griffith's. Yes, everyone knows uh, Griffith's goal. It's it's constantly repeated, and. You know, you're trying to justify it as well. You know, duh, in for a penny. You know, let's just keep going. Uh, and it doesn't matter what context. Or if it does, oh, he was being tricked. When we all know it's the same character. True. Whether he's uh, emaciated, whether he's young, whether he's, you know, a, a godlike demi creature or whatever. Like, it's the same character. It's the same you know, character. You could but parts of it he's, are he's turned off and on. You know, he's less of this or more of that. He's been depersonalized or whatever, but it's the same character. Right? But I've already so. explained why I distinguish Femto from Human Griffith. It's important to understand these changes in his psychology throughout the story to uh, ensure that you don't fall into the mistake of using the actions of Femto to inform your analysis of Human Griffith or the entire we haven't character even, of Griffith. I, at least I have not even talked about Femto. Or right. Do you want to talk about that the then? Because I, I was in the middle of explaining Femto and um, I kind of got... A well, you, kind of you were talking about narcissism and I was like... Okay, no, this, this was not, ages ago. Um, I wanted to prove that um, uh, Griffith did not lose his... Um, uh, Griffith losing his compassion in the Eclipse is not head canon. It's canon. 100% canon. So... Um, Sorry, is this uh, a reference to the... Was it the, the sword cemetery where he sees, sees guts and he says i don't feel anything no it's a reference just... to the uh to the god i'll read it out for you um 
So in my document, I said, um, I know that you don't require empathy to be moral, but in Griffith's specific case, empathy was the deciding factor in his moral action. Griffith hesitated in strangling guts because of his empathy. It overrode his spiteful feelings. Wait, towards wait, stop. Him. We can go over that. What after. does that mean? Um, what does that mean? Well, when Griffith first sees guts, um, when guts first saves him from um, from the dungeon, the first thing Griffith does is he goes for Guts's throat and tries to strangle him. Then Guts his tear Guts, Guts starts crying and he, he literally cries on Griffith's face. Then there's a thought bubble of of Griffith reacting to that. Then there are multiple panels of him slowly, intentionally moving down his hand to caress Guts's arm and hand after seeing Guts in uh, tears. He's comforting him. This indicates that his love for Guts allowed him to stop himself from uh, strangling him. Or, or think about this. He's so weak, his first attempt to do a thing is not going to be effective. Okay, I would accept that as a possible interpretation, if not for the added context of later scenes when he's in the same general mind space. For example... He feels je- he feels clear. He shows clear concern for Guts's well-being in the fight with Wild, and tries to reach for a sword to help him out. And he tries to save Guts from falling during the eclipse. He doesn't want any harm to de- to befall Guts. He cannot hurt Guts out of spite in this state of mind. But something is clearly different after the transformation. He still possesses those spiteful feelings towards Guts. That's why he raped Casca. But he didn't possess the empathy to overcome that this time. In chapter 82, which is completely canon, by the way, a lot of people will say that I can't mention the idea of evil because chapter 83 isn't canon. It is canon. It's just like Miriam said that it was too early at the time. Yeah. Griffith is surprised that he is no longer feeling anything towards his men like he had previously been feeling throughout the entire eclipse sequence. He says, all their deaths are piercing through me. How strange I can't feel anything. You could argue that this was him just not caring, but that would be awful character development for Griffith to just do a complete 180 just like that. But also... Wait, wait, wait. wait. So you're blaming the writer? uh, No, I'm, I'm, I'm still going through it. But also... The proof that this is a magical transformation. The idea of evil responds to this by explaining that Griffith will never cry again. That he has frozen Griffith's heart and that Griffith's compassion has died. There's nothing ambiguous about that. That's what he tells him. This is further proven by the Slug Count's initial audience with the God Hand. The first one. When he sacrifices his wife. After finding out about his heretic wife, he tries to kill himself to end his suffering and quote-unquote, escape his despair. Then the God Hand appear and tell him that in exchange for sacrificing his wife, he would be quote-unquote, turned into a supernatural being that would never feel sorrow or despair. He's told that his fragile human heart will be buried in a similar line to the idea of evil talking about Griffith's frozen heart. They say that sacrificing your loved ones will open a fissure in your heart, allowing evil to surge. This is the canonical effect of the transformation. It inhibits empathy and compassion. That's the reason the Count um, summoned them in the first place, because he no longer wanted to feel such empathetic um, despair towards his wife. That's the reason he... um, he summoned the God Hand in the first place, and they explained to him that time that if you go through with this, the transformation will take away this compassion, and you will become an apathetic or wholly evil apostle. So it's not headcanon. It's 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 supported in every single um, uh, transformation ceremony that we see in the manga. So do, do you disagree with any of that? Does any of that sound I'm like headcanon? Sure. Are we talking about? We're talking about a lot. Like, what... We're talking about the effect of the what the, the transformation has on people that say yes to the sacrifice, as proven by what the God Hand say to the Count and what the idea of evil says to Griffith. The effect of the transformation is a loss of human compassion, so that you can no longer feel any sort of positive love towards the people uh, that you previously cared about. That's the reason that the Slug Count initially. Accepted the God Hand's offer. He didn't want to feel things anymore. 
So that's the effect of the transformation. So that proves that my separation of Griffith and Femto as separate en entities in terms of a loss of empathy isn't headcanon, it's canonical fact. And people miss it all the time. And that, yeah, that's probably, probably my... I probably don't own. recall that. Oh. Yeah, I don't recall that chapter. I'd have to check it out. Well, that's... Well, I don't know why in my... Um, it's, it's the start of volume three, I believe. Unless not. For some reason, this Re Read Berserk Manga Online website, Berserk Chapter 1 starts like six volumes into the manga for some reason. It's like chap it's like Berserk Chapter G. Um, but yeah. Um, it's like ch Chapter 7 or something. Yeah, Chapter 7. If you scroll down, in fact, I'll read it out loud to you. Um, uh, where is it? Um, uh, here, I've almost got it. Um, uh, that's right. You couldn't do it. You couldn't cut away any, you couldn't cut away half of yourself. And seeing the triumphant knowing smile of your betrayer, your wife, drove you to the depths of despair. You decided to end your own life to escape that despair. However, your despair itself was part of the wheel of fate. The wailing of your soul, which could never be eased by the gods of this world, opened up a portal to another dimension. And you said, Are you gods or messengers from hell? It makes no difference. Whatever you are, save me from my suffering. If you do, I'll give you anything. And we promised you that we would make you into a supernatural being who would never know sorrow or despair. For a single phrase, in exchange for sacrificing her. Indeed, you said it. I offer this woman for sacrifice, the life you couldn't take by your own hand, the life of the person you loved the most and hated the most. You gave it to us so that you could bury your fragile human heart, so that you could transcend your very humanity. And I'm going to stop going on now, but I think I've proven my point. All right, so where are we in? Well, let me just see the video. We haven't moved the video in an hour or so. Um, well, we have uh, been going off for almost like three I might, hours. I might now, actually so. have to leave soon because my girlfriend wants to sleep, I think. Oh, yeah, we are actually we're going on three hours. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that was interesting. I didn't get the last part of those 10 minutes, but thank you for uh, reciting your notes. That was helpful. Did I change your mind about sure anything at all? Well, you cherry picked narcissism, which is not. Oh, oh also, you assume there's one you, more thing that I really, really, really no, need to go over no, really quickly. No, no, then we, we gotta go. It, it'll be anyway, really quick, uh, literally just a sentence. Okay. Go um, uh, you said that uh, someone got really angry in the in the last part that um, in in the last response well, video that there, um, there's lots of people who get angry that you know, no, probably bears. Talk. Yeah, that's that's normal for him. Uh, that uh, Guts didn't actually try to rape Casca, and he was possessed by a demon at the time. I just want to clear it up. Guts wasn't actually possessed by a demon in that scene. That was a previous scene where Guts is defending Casca from demons, and then a demon goes into him and he tries to strangle Casca. That was the possession. The later scene when he tries to rape her, he simply sees her with her breasts out, having been ripped because some soldiers tried to rape her, and then he goes at her. The, the Breach of Darkness only shows up a little bit after he, he uh, already started trying to forcefully kiss her. So I just wanted to um, uh, uh, disprove that common misconception that Gus didn't try to rape Cassie because he 100% did. Sorry, I've been going on for too long. I'll let you leave now. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I know that wasn't the easiest conversation you might have had on the topic. I don't know. If uh, this is a thing you keep doing, but you know, enjoy your your love of manga and anime, and keep making videos and analysis. It's always nice to hear differing opinion, even if we disagree. So, uh, you thank too. you so much for coming on. That was uh, that was good of you. You too, man. Thanks for having me. All yeah, right. Well, you. we yeah, we'd be happy to have you in the Discord, and you could argue to your heart's content to well, maybe the nicer people in there because they they have their own opinions on on media as well. So. Maybe you might uh, change a few minds. I don't know. I'm going to go keep reading the rest of that arc because I clearly didn't know as much as I should. So that would be good. And it's an awesome manga. Everyone should check it out. Uh, it's one of the greats. It's one of those, it has that 90s appeal, but still modern. 
it's beautiful artwork whether you get the story in depth or just appreciate the uh the good versus evil vibe or i think it's almost a a theme of of just striving against all odds it's so impossible sometimes these stories they're the environments the characters the villains they seem larger than life and it's there's too many characters for me to to follow and i sort of got tired of, of reading just because it's so big and a lot to remember but if you like epics if you like was it was it this 400th episode no it must be 300 still the uh the manga is still going on so it just takes a very long time that's to 374 i believe wow that's amazing so anyway uh do check out berserk it is an awesome anime manga and thank you for your time guys it is sweltering holy crap is run out of water a long time ago but uh thank you so much for tuning in and have yourself a great evening we'll talk to you soon I keep your suggestions coming in the discord that'd be helpful you know what we're doing tomorrow or the day after actually i think tomorrow's a day off but uh friday we might have another video coming up so thank you so much have a great evening good night good night bye